a Board of County Commissioners meeting for August 13th, 2019. We'll begin our meeting this morning by asking uh, Pastor Sean Thomas, pastor of Southside Baptist Church, uh, to come forward to give our invocation, and uh, Commissioner Rawls will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you're able. Thank you, Pastor Thomas, and uh, thank you, Commissioner Rawls. Uh, commissioners, on our um, agenda, item two, approval of the minutes of July 9th, 2019 commission meeting. I approve, uh, move for approval. Second. Okay, we've got a proper motion by Commissioner uh, Goddard and a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, we have a 905 certain, so it's just 903, so we'll take a short recess till 905. I'd like to reconvene our regular Board of County Commission meeting. And uh, we have a 905 certain Port Authority meeting, so we'll recess the regular meeting and I'll convene the Port Authority uh, meeting. Commissioners, our first. Uh, Matter of business, item A, approval of minutes of July 11th, 2019 regular meeting and the July 9th, 2019 Port Authority so, regular meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, got a proper motion approved by Commissioner Rawl, proper second by Commissioner Harvey. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate it saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, now I'd like to open up the public comment portion of this meeting. Uh, any individuals wishing to speak um, on any of the Port Authority items? Okay, seeing none, we'll close this portion. And uh, general discussion, any items to bring forward on the Port Authority? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> um, well, I just wonder if we could get an update for the public's interest on the uh, Triangle Park and what we're doing. Um, Matt, do you have anything on that? Um, Are you specifically referencing Project Play? Yes, sir. Project play. We, we had um, the first meeting with the uh, evaluation committee. Uh, Mrs. Julianne was, uh, she um, organized that meeting and held that meeting. Um, RFP will be, uh, is being prepared and will be going out uh, relatively soon on that. So RFP is on the street. Is it already on the, yeah. okay. The or RFP evaluation team as designated by the board at workshop has met. They've completed their strategy meeting. Um, the members of the public who are on that team have been informed of their expectations of what it means to serve on the team and, and how we go about. Um, the RFP is on the street. We included all interested vendors that were provided to us by a host of different resources, including some of the members on the Parks and Recs Recreation Committee. Um, and those will be on the street for about 21 days. I can follow up with you and tell you the day they closed. I did not have that off the top of my head, but it'll be... Hopefully the 1st of August, I think, is when those bids will close. Uh, project play is due August, September 9th, I'm sorry. So um, those proposals will be back. We do have a pre-bid meeting coming up in the next week, um, and then we'll go from there. Can you tell us what, what I really wanted was just the public to know what's going on. <laughs> um, 
we, so we've been dealing we've, with this at workshop. We've workshops, designed this the RFP that's on the street, and the RFP is written in two phases. So, and they can be, uh, proposers can submit on one or both of the phases. Phase one is obviously revitalization and basically from the ground up, kind of a redo of that playground structure. Phase two is exploratory um, in an effort to see what a splash pad would look like or the impact of it would have on our budget. Um, you, they can propose on one or either solutions. We are leaving it up to the playground industry experts to propose it. We have put it into their, into their realm to give us the best solution that they see that fits our needs. And then we will evaluate that based on um, all the criteria that's in the RFP, which has to do with everything to its viability, sustainability, um, uses of target age groups, um, its inclusiveness for ADA patrons. Um, so, so the evaluation criteria is broad so that we can also evaluate and get the best product for, for our needs. So if I may, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Turner. Uh, we've, we sent that RFP out as either or. They can either yes, bid project play, a water feature, or both. That's correct. They can, they can propose on part one or part two or both. They can do whichever they'd like to do. So we did, I, we did target some companies who only do playgrounds and some companies who only do splash pads, but we want all the options that we can have before us. Okay, thank you. When do you expect the RFPs back? So they close on um, September 9th, and then as, do, as, as procedure with an RFP, the evaluation team have... I apologize, I did not have all of these dates off the top of my head. Um, the RFP team will have about a week to review those proposals and then we'll meet for a preliminary evaluation. And then we do have a scheduled date that allows us to bring those proposers in and to get some more information or to say, to try to more narrow down um, the scope of what we're doing, make sure that we're comparing apples to apples, that we don't have somebody with a, 100 patron swing and somebody with a two patron swing. So, you know, we, we want the opportunity to kind of say, okay, we love the product you're offering, but really we need to narrow this down for what's really best for Putnam County. And then we have a final evaluation. And then what will happen is that committee will rank order them based on that criteria. So again, go back to the criteria we just talked about, sustainability, um, the values of the county, what's the best product, what, you know, all, all of those items. We're gonna say, we believe this is the best in part one and this is the best in part two. We're gonna bring that to you, ranking only. And then we will bring it to you at workshop for you to get a better idea of pieces and parts, basically. It, Essentially, we're gonna end up with some sort of a la carte product that we're gonna be able to say at workshop, okay, you know, here's our top ranked firm and here's their components and the price breakdown of the components. Do you want 10 slides or two slides? And here's the dollar amount. And then we can better negotiate a contract on, on budget based on what you're tolerant of. Um, Mr. Turner. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, does this contract or this <coughs> RFP that's on the street, does it have a dark time? So basically... You're in the dark time. As okay, soon so as it hits the street... Until September 9th, the commissioner's not supposed to be talking to any of the vendors. Is that not correct? That's correct. The only person that should have conversation from you to the vendors or even the RFP team to you is through me because I'm a neutral non-voting party. So I represent everybody in the process as I do in all RFPs. So if y'all have questions or the committee has questions or vendors have questions, they all come through me and then I communicate with the, the relative party. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. Julianne, could you, when that happens, could you inform us of when we're in that period? Um, I didn't know that we were in that period. I haven't had no conversations, but you know, okay. But I try not to anyway with sure. any vendors, but just to make sure we're not, you know, so and what I can begin doing is as soon as we issue a, a bid or a solicitation of any time, I can send out a, an email to the five of you and let you know that it has been issued. And for all bids or solicitations, that period starts when it issues and right. closes when action is taken. So when okay. the board takes action on it. And the other thing that excites me about Project Play, and I want the community to know and the people that are watching us on, will, will be watching us on YouTube later on, is this is a partnership with the Noontime Rotary Club. 
Sure. And um, it's been kind of exciting to watch what's happening in our parks and recreation system with these clubs who want to partner or, or uh, companies that want to partner with us and make our money go further. So this isn't just a Putnam County effort. This is a noontime rotary effort to bring uh, upgrades to the park that are badly needed and basically starting over from scratch. And uh, it's exciting to see that. So encourage any companies out there that want yes, to partner with Yes, so if anybody us. else wants <laughs> yeah. to volunteer some money, uh, they also can reach out to me yeah. and we'll add their little pot to the to the pot and decide who wants to sponsor what or, you know, make sure everybody gets to sponsor what they right. want to. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other questions? We're good. Okay. Thank you, Julianne. Sure. Okay. Any other business come before the Port Authority? Okay. Seeing none, we'll adjourn the Port Authority meeting and reconvene the regular Board of County Commission meeting. And we'll move down to presentations. Uh, item A, uh, Mr. Victor Cora with the United States Census Bureau. And also with him today is Jennifer Pyle. So, welcome, Mr. Cora. Welcome, Mr. Fickers and members of the Commission. And uh, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you and share with you one of the largest mobilizations that we're about to embark here, and we do it every 10 years. And with me is Ms. Jennifer Powell, who's my cohort in crime, and we're excited to be here and to have this opportunity to help you shape the future of Putnam County. It's exciting to hear about Project Play because the money follows the numbers, and it's good to hear that you have public and private partnerships, and all businesses in the county, and even mom pa organizations and businesses make decisions based on the numbers. And we're about to be able to embark on an opportunity to shape the future of Putnam County as we decide and get ready to um, educate, engage, and motivate the population and counting the residents of Putnam County here in 2020. We've been counting the population since 1790. We're about to embark in our 24th decennial, and we're counting 324 somewhat million people across the county, largest mobilization, peacetime mobilization that we're about to embark on. And we cannot do this without the help of trusted voices and stakeholders such as yourselves and the residents of Putnam County, because no one knows the county better than the, ones that the folks that live in the county know the nuances of the county. Why we're counting? Two primary reasons, political power and funding. Representation, we're the third most represented state in the union behind Texas and, and California. And there's a possibility that we'll probably gain two more seats in the House of Representatives. Why is that? Because of the population. Funding, $675 billion are distributed every year, <coughs> but it's only based on the population. The money follows the needs. So we need to make sure that we count every resident in the county in the city, in the state, in the country to make sure that you get your fair share of funding so that you can take control of the future and, say, and shape the future of Putnam County. What does this funding pay for? Number one, education, our kids. The future is, also, is funded by this federal funding program. Healthcare, transportation, social services, emergency responses, Every time you call 911, every time we call rescue, stuff that we take for granted is paid for by federal funding and it's all based on the population. So we want to make sure that we count everyone on April 1st, 2020. Shaping your future, decisions that are made for people that are suffering disability and also our elderly and our children. Privacy and confidentiality, everyone's concerned what we're going to do with this information and how do we protect it. We as census employees, we're sworn to an oath that we will not share any of the information that we collect. Any information that's collected is encrypted immediately, and we do not share any of that information. We take it with us to our grave. The census does not share any information that we collect for 72 years and a day. Anyone who's engaged in genealogy knows that right now the only information that you can extrapolate from Ancestry.com and all these genealogy sites is 1940 census data. 1950 census data will not be released till 2022, 72 years and a day. And we're doing everything that we can through layers and layers of security to make sure that the information is not compromised. Um, Jennifer and I have to go through four layers of security just to get through our laptop every day when we try to go in and do our work. 
This is our story. We're sticking to it. We're going to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. That's what we're doing. That's why we're engaging with you because no one knows this county better than you do. Why we're out here so early, we started this process a long time ago. Because the census is going to be different this, this time around. You're going to have an opportunity to enumerate yourself anywhere, anytime, by phone or online. You're going to receive an invitation sometime around the middle of March to start self-enumerating yourself. You could pick up the phone, give us a call, and self-enumerate yourself. Or you can get your mobile device and do that. Or go to the local library or a faith-based organization, our local businesses who may recycle, help us by recycling their technology, and we can go there and self-enumerate yourself. So you're going to have an opportunity. You're not going to get a form the first time around. You're going to get a letter inviting you to your address so that you can self-enumerate yourself. That's why we're in this educational phase right now all across the country letting the population know that the census is going to be taken a little bit differently. Why we're doing that in the sense to save money, our taxpayer dollars, and get more people to self-enumerate themselves so that we can get a true characteristics of our country so that the funding comes down the pipeline properly and correctly for all the programs. And that's why, after talking to Mr. Suggs and Ms. Parsons, we've met a couple of times, now we're coming before you, and we're forming our complete, our complete count committee, which is the trusted voices and stakeholders of Putnam County that is going to help us in the education, the engagement, and the motivation to make sure that the residents of Putnam County self-enumerate themselves and we get a true characteristics of the county. And that group of trusted voices and stakeholders are the ones that we're going to come across and use the events that are existing in the community, partner up with businesses, faith-based, educational, uh, community-based organizations, our local businesses, so that we can continue sharing the, imp the, the importance of the census, because depending on who you're talking to, the message is different. The message that's going to resonate with them is going to be totally different. It's going to be different for a young a family is going to be different for our business community and it's also going to be different for this government body that I'm talking to right now. We're using a tool called Rome. Rome is Response Outreach Area Mapper and it's going to allow us to dial in exactly where in the county we're going to go for those areas that's going to be that we predict are going to be a little bit different difficult to enumerate. So it's going to give us a snapshot as to what part of the county, which is the uh, northwest side of the county or the southeast side of the county, depending on the characteristics of that track, it's going to uh, let us know what kind of message we want to take to that particular area based on who lives there, the income, whether it's young folks, older folks, high renters, or who's there, we're going to be able to come up with a crafted message specifically to dial into that county. I took a quick snapshot of the county. And those dark shaded areas that you see, the darker the shade, the higher the number of households we predict that will not respond to the census. And we may have to go in there and partner up with local churches, the libraries in the area, the businesses in the area to help us get the message to the folks. This is Putnam County by the numbers. In, in uh, 2010, the census predicted you had about 74,365 people in the county. The estimate in 2018 is that we have about 74,164,000 people in the county. And the low response uh, to track, well, we figure there's a low response score of about 20% uh, or more. It's about six tracks in the county. So that gives us an idea of where, we, where we're going to descend and come up with a crafty message with the help of the Complete Count Committee. These are the areas and the population that we believe, the census, are a little bit difficult to enumerate. Children under five, our veterans, our people with disabilities, people experiencing homelessness, people living in rural areas low-income and underserved senior citizens, migrant farm workers, foreign-born, people with limited English proficiency, and renters. Now, we know that there is a sampling of this population living across our county and living across our country. This gives us an idea of to who are the residents of the county that we want to make sure that this message resonates with the most. Children under five are one of our biggest areas. 
if we miss and we undercounted over a million children under five in the 2010 census, that, was a, that gave us a ripple effect because that undercount follows these children through high school. Overcrowded classrooms, no money for brick and mortar buildings. It affects all kinds of different programs with children we now. So there's going to be a very intensive messaging for the children for, to make sure that we don't miss our children. And why do we miss our children? Because they're probably living with grandparents. They're living in split family homes. They may be in foster care, and maybe that foster parent doesn't think that they have to count that child. They may just be living with, with a cousin or a, a distant relative, and that distant relative doesn't think that they need to count that child. If a child is in your household, on the 1st of April, we need to count them so we make sure that the programs and the funding comes appropriately for those children. And these are the programs that are effective when we miss children. Healthcare, Medicare, special education, Head Start, foster care support, nutrition, supplementary nutrition assistant, and housing assistant. These are all programs when you talk to parents and they're telling you, well, I can't get my kid into Head Start or um, I can't get into uh, uh, special nutrition programs, or I, I was overlooked for insurance, or I'm on a waiting list for this. All they have to do is just fill out the census. The more we get them to fill out the census, we're not going to get these issues with our, with our families coming up. And the next step is uh, we've been talking to Ms. Parsons. We're getting ready to do our complete count committee workshop and get an activity plan going to Mr. Suggs. And we spoke, last time we spoke, we talked about a big <clears throat> census day here in the county as we get closer to the census the week, that first week in April. So we're definitely on track. We're just here to give the commission as a body and the gallery an update of what things are going. The county has definitely engaged. Also, we have representation from some of the, uh, a couple of the municipalities as well. So we're right on track to make sure that Putnam County shapes the future and we get a complete and accurate count in, in the county. And I kind of want to close it up. We'll see if this uh, video will work. Can one girl in a small town, an architect in a major city, and a suburban high school coach shape the future of the United States? Yes, they can. Because every 10 years, the census gives us that power. You can shape your future by responding to the 2020 census. Where do we need new roads to make our lives easier? Where will new school programs help our children thrive? Where could a new health clinic benefit neighborhoods? The 2020 census will inform these decisions and shape how billions of dollars will be distributed to communities like yours each year. And in 2020, you can respond to the census online, by phone, or by mail. It's easy, safe, and important. Make sure you and everyone you know is counted. Now is the time for you to get involved. Your community needs you. Together, we can educate and excite, inspire and make sure every voice is heard. Together, we can shape our future. Ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing jobs to the community. We're paying $12 to $19 an hour for enumerators plus 58 cents a mile. So we encourage folks, and I, we bought some flyers to go to 2020census.gov forward slash jobs and apply for these local jobs because we also like for our enumerators to be also from the community. With that, I thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to come before you and share this information. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you, Victor. Questions? Uh, Commissioner Harvey? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Cora, thank you for coming today, and I appreciate it, and thank you for coming. Also, Ms. Pyle, um, you got two areas in the county that you've already designated as target areas that you need to focus in on. How can we, the board, help you focus in on those better? We, what, the best thing is to get trusted voices from those particular areas that can help us engage that particular segment of, of the county. So that could be faith-based leaders, that could be the local library, the local businesses, because those are the folks that, the people that live in, the, in that particular track will engage with a lot. Because if Jennifer and I go there, they don't know us. Right. But those, that, that's one area. And also, if there are any events or activities that are going on in that particular track, and once we determine who lives there, then we can determine what kind of messaging we, could, we can deliver to that particular track. So thank, thank you for you. that question. Good question, thank Mr. Hart. 
Yeah, go to Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> so in, in regarding the, the uh, faith-based leaders and civic groups and stuff like that, um, would there be training available if we were, are, are you gonna have a, a local presence, like an office in Putnam County? Our closest office to Putnam is probably gonna be in Jacksonville. That's the local census office. But Jennifer and I are gonna be your direct liaison. We have a digital forest of information to share with Ms. Parsons and the Complete Count Committee and also to help craft up whatever messaging we need to a specific group. So we have all kinds of information that, I have, that has already been authorized by the Census Bureau, but then it's also good to add the local Putnam County flavor depending on who the group is that we're trying to target. So yes, there is a bunch of information available. We just wanna add a little bit of the local county flair to it and then deliver the message. But there's social media hashtags available. There's social media tags that can be added to websites. We have already a list of 50 ways that census data is used that can be put on a website and kind of rotated with a countdown clock. Um, there is information, more information on how the census affects our children and why it's important to count our kids, our elderly, our high school kids, our, you know, so there's all, there's the feather of information on why the census is important. What's really important here, Commissioner Ross, is who we're delivering this message to and why is it important to them. It's 10 questions that we're gonna get. Starting in January, we're gonna count the people experiencing homelessness. In February, we're gonna count group quarters, which are correctional institutions, universities, hospitals, and senior citizen centers. And then in March, you're gonna start receiving your invitation to participate. So if I'm a single parent, why should I fill out the census? That's why we need to answer that question. If I'm a business owner, why should I fill out the census? So depending on who we're talking to is how we're gonna be answering those questions to those folks. But yes, we do have a bunch of information and we will go anywhere, anyone who's willing to listen. A set of ears, 2,000 set of ears. We're here to do that through the end of this campaign because we only have one chance to do it every 10 years to reset these numbers. So if we had, if we had a speaking opportunity for y'all, y'all wouldn't have a problem coming down? And you have a speaking like opportunity for us. We don't have a problem uh, coming down. And also, anyone in this gallery, in this body that wants to you know, share the information because there's some things, you know, we can, we, you can also become an advocate for the census. And if you want to come and talk on behalf of the census, that would be great as well. We, we have, um, call, you know, university presidents, we have local leaders in the community that become part of our speakers bureau as well, because they are the trusted voices and stakeholders of those communities. And for example, the sheriff in Gilcrest County, He's, you know, he's loved by the community, so he's a trusted voice. He's doing videos and, you know, interviews encouraging the community to participate in the census. So it depends on, on the community. We get different people to, to join our, our conga line. We call it the conga line, the census conga line. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Smith? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we <clears throat> have a... Uh, mobile ag community that uh, moves through our community seasonally. Uh, how do you, um, or where do those folks get counted? There's that usual residence kind of clause that the census has. So wherever they spend most of their time is where they'll be counted. But for the most part, if you're in Putnam County on April 1st, you'll get counted in Putnam County but it's normally where they will spend most of the time. It has nothing to do with taxes. It, has, it just has to do with where their usual residence is. Um, it, and then I'll give you an example for, let's say, Bay County, right? Bay County, we just suffered a hurricane. So they've been displaced. So wherever they're at on April 1st, it may not be in Bay County. It may be with a, res, with a, with a relative in Bay County, but another address, it could be in another county, they have to be counting wherever they're, they're at because it may, it, it may pop a flag and it may, they may have to send an enumerator out because we know that Bay County was devastated. So wherever you're at on the 1st of April is where we're gonna count you. And your correctional institutions are group quarters, so they'll be counted through an administrative count in February. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. I thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Thanks for the information. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you for the information. <clears throat> Taking my Joe drive up. Okay, we'll move down to the next presentation, item B, and ask Ms. Cheryl Lynch and uh, Kevin Monahan to come forward with the Small Business Development Council for quarterly report. Good morning, everybody. Thank morning. you for your time. Uh, two things today is the quarterly report and the renewal of the MOU. I can see that the MOU is on the consent agenda. If there are any questions pertaining to that, the city has already signed their portion, so for your information. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions to Cheryl? I'd be. Commissioner Rawls? I'm still struggling with trying to figure out how many businesses we have in Putnam County, and I know you guys don't do that, but <clears throat> do you have an opinion about um, the uh, importance of business licensing? Sometimes it is critical, depending upon the type of business, that they're able to prove that they are in business in the locale in which they're located. If they wanted to do business in St. Augustine, they would have to show that they have a license in Putnam County where their home address is in order to get an affiliated license to do business there. So it, it can be a detriment if there is no business license available for folks outside of the city and just located in the county territory. So it, it can cause issues. We, 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 we quit doing that sometime back apparently and um, it just seems to me then, I've never thought of that part of it to be honest with you, but um, you know, being licensed in the city plaque, I've never come across that because we have a city license, but I can imagine if we were in the county, um, you're right, we get that request a lot from vendors that we set up. Right, especially if they don't need a state license of any sort. Yep. For you, it may be a different scenario because you're a general contractor, you have a state license, so that would supersede any other license. But for those types of businesses, either e-commerce or retail or uh, mobile, like landscaping, uh, painting, things like that, that wouldn't need certain state licenses, it can be a factor and then being able to get licenses in other territories as well or for informational purposes too sometimes the banks are like well where's your business license right and then we have to go through the process and usually I'll get on the phone with the bank and say look the county doesn't only the city that's not required oh okay so it's an educational process it's yeah, something we should look at putting on the agenda one day in the near future to discuss re-implementing and bringing that the Mr. Chairman. Okay. Back in. All right, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I was on the board when uh, our tax collector brought that to us and we were spending more money trying to collect than what we were seeing. And I, the number was like 3,000 people had a business license or some sort of business in the county out of their home or whatever. It was kind of weird. But I've yet to hear since we've done that of any problems of contractors not being able to get licensed in other counties or any problems with it their business plan being presented to a local banking facility. So do you have any real hard evidence of that? Because, I mean, it's I don't want to have that. It's just an education process. Usually my clients will call me and say, what do I do? And I say, well, just let them know this, or I would be happy to talk to whoever it is that um, they're talking to. So because we have folks in, in the local counties, we've got a single office in Clay County, St. Augustine, Nassau, and obviously we're based out of Duval we can communicate that way as well. So it's not a matter of us tracking it um, to have hard evidence to say, oh, it's detrimental to this business or that business for whatever reason. Um, but it's just an extra couple of steps that a business has to take in order to circumvent not having a, a county business tax receipt. Well, we did that. <clears throat> we did that to help lessen the burden on the, on the people. I don't want to go back to recreating a problem if it doesn't exist. Uh, sometimes we have unintended consequences, but in this case, I've heard no downside to that, other than we don't know where our, all of our businesses are located. That's one thing. <clears throat> but other than that, I have heard nothing else. So I don't want to create a problem just to try to solve a problem You're when right. there isn't a problem there. <clears throat> Commissioner, what usually happens is it's a, a case of uh, an inexperienced banker that doesn't know that there's an unincorporated section of the county 
and is merely going down the checklist for the loan. Same thing in, in let's say, St. John's. It might be a new clerk that doesn't understand that the business is, in fact, in Putnam County, but they do not have to have a business license in that part of the county. So that's really what we run into. It's nothing hard, hardcore. And, and the problem, the other problem was that it was, it was giving the consumer a false sense of security that they had a lot. People were saying, well, you have, we're licensed. And, and what does that mean? You paid your check. That's all that means. You're not in good standing with anybody. No, that's right. So in fact, it, that's why most counties now call it a business tax receipt and not a business license because okay. it, it implies something that's not really there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, before I go to Commissioner Turner, that's what I was thinking is this was a business tax receipt and right. people were mistaken them for a business license thinking somebody was licensed. So that's, right. um, so that's one of the reasons to go. Commissioner Turner? That's basically what I wanted to point out, Mr. Chairman. This hasn't been called an occupational license in quite a number of years. It was a business tax receipt. And with it being that, that means that you're supposed to at least make enough money off of it to pay for collecting it. They, they came in and did a presentation to us. I wasn't here when they did away right. with it, but they made a presentation to us last year uh, to as a follow-up. Uh, Linda Meyer's office did, a tax collector, and said that nothing had changed and, the, and, and, the, uh, and they did not miss the money at all. If anything, their overall receipts went up because they didn't have to collect this money. So I, I'm with Commissioner Harvey before we implement a program that we may not see broken. Uh, I, I deal with these bankers and people myself, and usually you can just tell them there's no such thing of what, what you're asking for, and they'll go ahead and check that box off for you. So I, I think we need to be real careful about re-implementing a business tax receipt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goddard. Uh, to open a business, don't you have to register with SunBiz? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So you'd have a record of all the businesses through SunBiz, correct? That's well, only the state if you're keeps that record, I yeah. Think. Okay. A record, a, record. So right. if you're not incorporated, well, an LLC would the be LLC the same or thing. I don't know. Do you have to do a sole proprietor on SunBiz? Well, a sole so. proprietor, okay. you so would register a fictitious name or a doing business as. Okay, so you just, if you're a do, doing business as, you don't have to register at all? Yes, you do have you to do, apply you, you for have, a fictitious you have to name, name on SunBiz. And yeah. that's on SunBiz. Yes. So mm -hmm. most businesses would be registered on SunBiz then? Most, yes. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Commissioner Ross? Um, I, I think the, one of the critical components is the life safety issue of it. Um, if, if I had a, a five-acre parcel of land <clears throat> in Putnam County and I decided that um, I wanted to open up um, – a, a factory to produce widgets, and I'm going to be using caustic chemicals of any kind. I don't have to register that with the county. The fire department doesn't need to know what's in my backyard. I can comply with federal mandates by having my um, material safety data sheets on site, um, but the county wouldn't know. So, you know, you, you I, I think there, there's several missed opportunities here, but probably the singular most important would be um, having the advanced knowledge for our fire service um, and law enforcement to know what they're getting into. Um, for a long time, and even to this day, there was a, a place out in Hollister that was behind a chain link fence um, producing something. And, you know, there's rumors back when I worked at the fire department about this place, and if it ever caught on fire, we want to surround and drown, never want to go inside because nobody really knew what was inside there. But I think we compound this now by um, not requiring the business tax receipt. In the city of Palaka, the business tax receipt triggers an annual inspection by the fire department. So they're, the firefighters are going through, they're doing their um, annual uh, walk through and, and assessment. They know what's there at each location. They, they write up reports and they check the, the date codes on the fire extinguishers and they look at the emergency exit lights to make sure they're working properly. And this alleviates the strain on the fire marshal from having to go out there and do that. But um, it, 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 you know, from a, from a business owner's perspective, I don't want to pay any more taxes than anybody else. But at the same time, I think it, it's a prudent thing to consider doing um, when it comes to public safety. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. As always, thank you for your support. Thank you. Okay. We'll move down to uh, item C. Is Mr. Calvin Martin here? Um, Circuit 7 Community Alliance. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Gentlemen, you should hopefully have a hard copy as I am 
going to put up a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you for having me this morning. Uh, my name is Calvin Martin. I am with the uh, Guardian at Lightham program, but I'm also your um, representative for the Circuit 7 Community Alliance. Um, there are two reasons why I wanted to come before you today. Um, one is to give an update to the child welfare system uh, within Putnam County. And the second thing is to also uh, speak with you all about um, getting a new representative for uh, to appoint to the Circuit 7 Alliance, as I have been your representative now for the past 13 years. And uh, I've been on the Alliance for 15 of those 13 years. I've chaired the Alliance for eight years. And I've just found it, it was time to, um, as I did for others who stepped aside for me, um, I, now my time to step aside for someone to bring in new ideas um, uh, and also to further evolve the alliance. So uh, I feel that this is a very important uh, initiative, which is why I wanted to continue to just provide you this update and to also stress to you the importance of continued Putnam County government representation on the alliance. So with that said, I'm gonna give you just a brief overview of what the current status of child welfare is in our community, and then we'll talk about um, representation moving forward. One thing about the Alliance is it is a, um, a state um, mandate with the statute of 201.196A, uh, uh, and this initiative really gives us our authority to act on behalf of the communities that we represent. Uh, really, the Alliance is a group that operationally oversees child welfare. That's why it was kind of birthed um, by the legislature, but really it oversees a multitude of different services, anything that impacts child services within a given community, whether it's in the educational system, uh, DJJ, uh, in the health-related system, uh, but everything usually flows through the foster care system, which is really the um, apex of the issue that we kind of focus on because of the number of challenges uh, that children have within foster care. Really, the Alliance is also the entity that kind of oversees the community-based care uh, initiative. And that's the community-based care is really the group that kind of oversees foster care within a given system. The, enter, the lead agency that oversees here is um, uh, Children's Partnership uh, for Children is actually situated in Daytona Beach. Their main organization is housed in Volusia County, but um, they do have an office here that oversees the local uh, community. So I'll talk a little bit more about uh, that in a few minutes. The other thing is that the Alliance, we're the group that kind of, I don't want to, I hate to use the word watchdog over the child welfare system, but in essence, that's what we are. Um, it's a broad base of, of uh, individuals that represent a multitude of different uh, organizations. And, and how we do that is um, primarily is through data that, um, that's brought to us that where we conduct an analysis to make a determination what type of service array is occurring within the local child welfare system and how do we go about initiating any change um, regarding that. Now this circuit is a circuit full of, of four counties and it's very imperative that Putnam County continues to have a voice in order to ensure that children within our community uh, remain represented. Putnam County once belonged to uh, District 3 uh, many years ago, which was overseen, uh, which was connected to the Gainesville area. Uh, and then when the um, community uh, initiative kind of revised itself to follow the judicial uh, court system, uh, we fell into a circuit system with Flagler, Putnam, St. John's, and Volusia County, um, which I think, uh, having worked in child welfare for close to 25 years, um, I kind of, and having born and lived here in Putnam County, uh, we always kind of 
consider ourselves the red-headed stepchild of child welfare because we have to always fight to ensure that uh, appropriate funding and services are maintained and sustained here in, in our community. And so this is one of the things that I am very passionate about, um, especially as your representative sitting on this important uh, body. The Alliance is made up of pretty much 30 members. And so these members are representative just not just state and county organizations, which Putnam County is one of them. It's also law enforcement as part of this, the court system, uh, the uh, state health department, uh, education school system, and then there are uh, at-large community representatives. Uh, we are not, I am not the only representative from Putnam County, but um, I'm probably the longest serving uh, member from Putnam County, and uh, there are only about maybe three of us um, that ac actually help to maintain oversight to ensure that Putnam County receives uh, the resources that it definitely should be receiving. I kind of wanted to get, just give you a real quick snapshot of um, the actual children in care right now. Um, historically, we normally have about 300 children in care at the same time. And when I say historically, I'm probably going back 30 years on average. And so there are times where we have more in care and then there are times we have less. It really depends on that pendulum swing in child welfare, whether the department is re overly removing children or the department has, has pulled back the removal of children. So um, right now, uh, over the past uh, year, we've had about 135 children removed uh, coming from the community into the child welfare system. Uh, the majority of those kids are our youngest children, our babies, um, going up until uh, age five. Um, the biggest challenge with our children that are older than that, and particularly our youth, is that um, youth that come in the system, it, it creates a harder challenge to place them. And then the other challenge is we are unable to keep a number of our kids um, being moved, being placed outside of our community. So not only do we remove our kids, then um, sadly they're sometimes uh, placed outside of Putnam County into other areas. As you can hear, see here, this is just a, a, just a quick representation of where the majority of our kids that are pulled into the system come from. All, obviously, uh, Palatka uh, being the biggest area within our uh, county, uh, obviously have the most children that are co coming to the system. The, the surprising part is interlocking. Interlocking being a, a smaller community, but yes, the second largest um, area where our children are coming from. That is troubling. Sadly, that's also been historical. There are a number of reasons why that is that we've, in the system, have been really looking at that and trying to proactively um, tackle that issue, but it's something that we're still uh, dealing with. Now, this is 2015 data, this particular uh, what this graph is particularly based off of, but um, the day, this is really how it's been trending over the past uh, couple of decades. This is just a quick snapshot of where we're at right now. <coughs> there are currently, as of last count, uh, a couple of months ago, there are 284 children within the um, dependency system. And I, I, I chose 2008 for a reason. I wanted to give you like an idea, a comparison to 10 years ago, um, just to kind of verify the historical factor. And, it, and it's also right around the time, only a few years removed when I was appointed uh, as your representative. Um, out of home care, 89% of our, our children are in out of home care, which, is, which means essentially they're removed from their parents um, they either go to relatives or they go to someone, a family friend, neighbors, uh, but they, they minimally stay within uh, the community. <coughs> As you can see, um, the majority of our kids that are in out-of-home care, uh, we have 53% of those kids, uh, it was the same way in 2008 that was in out-of-home care. Uh, why that jump in, in more children um, not staying with their parents uh, it, it's probably, I'm not sure if it's a byproduct of what's um, naturally happening in the system or not, uh, but uh, that's something else that we're, we currently analyze on an annual basis to see if we can alleviate that. Um, the other thing is, I uh, talked about the number of children that are placed with relatives, but the one thing I kind of want you to kind of look at is really the number of children that are placed outside of Putnam County. And so this is something that I've always really pushed with our lead agency into getting those kids back home. Because when you place, when you remove kids, not only take them out of the community, you pull them from friends, from families, from everything they know into a, um, 
environment that they have no idea, no um, connection with. And so uh, one of my primary functions, especially uh, when I chaired the Alliance, is to really push real hard, keep our children uh, within our community. One way I, I attempted to do that is really through increasing the number of foster homes within this community. Historically, we've always had probably no more than 10 foster homes um, every given year, you know, so, and, and it was a challenge to finally uh, break through that, which we did over the past year or two. Um, the lead agency, I think, has done a fabulous job for the first time to get us up to 28 active foster homes. That's the highest number um, that I have seen in Putnam County since I've been working in child welfare. So that's a kudos to them, but that out-of-home care number still has not gone down as much as I would have hoped that it, it uh, would so that's something that we're currently still um, working real hard uh, to deal with so um this pretty much brings me to the point of, of uh, continued representation uh, i stepped down from the alliance uh, in the, just inside a year ago uh, because i felt as i, I said earlier um, it was just that time and the alliance is getting we're bringing younger membership a new membership in order to take the uh, Alliance to the next level. Uh, alliance meetings are held in uh, Bunnell, which is the central part of this circuit for representatives from St. John's and Volusia County to, uh, as well as Putnam County to go to. Um, one of the things that, that I did fail in doing is I wanted to bring you a representative or be able to name a representative to replace me for you to uh, ideally uh, nominate and uh, vote on today, but I failed in that sense because I could not find uh, the, the one person, enough people that will commit to this. Um, and so uh, this is, uh, but I felt the need, I, I needed to go ahead and just place this in your hands. Uh, Linda Myers was the one that nominated me back in 2006, mainly because uh, she and I traveled, she was, she represented, she was the uh, Putnam County representative for the Alliance, even as a commissioner at that time. And I always attended Alliance meetings. And so that's how I got to know her. And then that's when she nominated me. Uh, I, I would implore you that uh, different county governments that do have a representation, a representative, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be a commissioner. It doesn't, uh, some of them have their, an employee, uh, a, a county employee that's a representative. Some of them is a community member like myself. Uh, here as a representative. Um, it depends on but uh, the person that you uh, ideally uh, would um, definitely uh, attend the quarterly meetings which occur four times a year uh, and actually just continue to be a voice for Putnam County and just be aware of what's going on in the system. So um, I'll be glad to facilitate any discussion regarding that um, d uh, down the road or uh, and I, I myself will continue to help uh, look for someone appropriate, uh, but I just feel that strongly that we should, um, ideally someone should continue to represent Putnam County government in this regard. So um, with that said, are there any questions? Okay, any questions? Commissioner Rawls? Ted Sackpole comes to mind. Would he be a viable candidate for that? And has anybody talked to him? I don't think so. Um, it's and it's not necessarily that you need to know child welfare. It's really the um, and, and I'm not sure um, uh, uh, how much he knows about the alliance, but uh, we could definitely educate him up on that. And if, as long as he uh, can, you know, grasp the, the um, inklings of what child welfare really is um, very quickly. So um, as, long, as long as he's committed to to really do you know that him by any chance or his family? Um, I'm not, uh, I've, I've heard the name, uh, and I'm a somewhat familiar, but I'm not. Uh, They're very passionate about um, uh, foster, fostering, mm -hmm. and they uh, advocate for that. Um, I became familiar with him, not only um, in here, but also uh, in Rotary as a guest speaker. Um, and he himself is a, a foster parent, he and his wife, and mm -hmm. what do they have, like seven? Yeah. They, they have a, at least seven kids in foster care. They're very passionate people, so I, uh, that would I would reach out to Mr. Stackpole and his family. Yeah, I, I, he sounds like a very appropriate <clears throat> person. He just only thing you just have to probably commit to making that drive to Benel for the quarterly meetings. Um, but uh, especially with him having uh, being a current foster uh, caretaker, uh, I I think he sounds like an appropriate person. Yeah, I agree. I think it, so. uh, this is his calling. I mean, he's not 
pastoring. He actually, uh, my, my church supports him in his mission. And um, so, yeah, I think he would probably be the person to, to contact. And I would say if, um, if he had any questions or anything, I could share everything that I have regarding the alliance with him. Have him give me a call, uh, whether it's via email or um, by phone. Uh, I would be glad to share everything I need to share with him in order to prepare him uh, to be to participate in the alliance meeting. So, and I can connect him to the current chair of the alliance. Okay, Commissioner. Can the administration do that. Yeah, um, that's what I was going to ask, Commissioner Turner. Yeah, I uh, <coughs> just need to ask some directions here. So basically, you've already stepped down. Thank you for your service, and you're bringing you're coming to us today to uh, help to let us help find an appointment that will be made by the commission to that seat. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay, well, Commissioner Rawls, are you going to reach out to Mr. Stackpole and see if he would be interested or? Um, I'd, I'd rather, stat I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know him personally. I've just met him in here and at civic groups, but um, if, if somebody has his contact information, I'll do it. You know yeah, him absolutely. personally? I know him personally. Would you mind reaching out to, to him on behalf of the commission to see if he would have interest? I'd be glad. Is that all right with the other commissioners if uh, yeah. Commissioner Harvey reaches out to him? Okay, and then um, like it's just the requirement is quarterly meetings or any other requirements other than? Not unless he becomes the chair, but no, the quarterly <laughs> meetings would be the only requirement. <laughs> Moving him along a little too fast right now. So. <laughs> I have to worry about that for at least two years. Okay. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for you. You mentioned West Putnam and that alarmed you, the Interlarkin area. Um, the town of Interlarkin is a very small part of Interlarkin. And if you take in Interlarkin, uh, <laughs> my wife gets on to me about my pronunciation of Interlarkin. <laughs> the extra R, yeah. Uh, the extra R in there. Uh, but if you look at all of West Putnam, it, it, it tends to about 31%. And what do you think drives those numbers is it the economy there? Is it the housing that's been kind of left dilapidated, if you will, from generation to generation? What do you what do you see drives these numbers up? Um, I think everything you just said, but this is the the biggest premise that we kind of um, uh, when we discussed this years ago as a as a group. Um, we discovered that interlocking has a large volume of homes that are spread out for one mm -hmm. another. You don't necessarily, when you talk about your neighbors, in a lot of communities, I can see my neighbor, I can look out, look out the window and see my neighbors only a couple yards away. In interlocking, we find that that is, the distance between neighbors is probably almost three times as much, as more. So therefore, isolation, there are higher instances of isolation between uh, with it with families and neighbors um, there and because of that that isolation kind of because of all the other issues that you kind of just recently named um, Interlocking has a very high uh, sex abuse child sex abuse rate um, and, and, and high neglect rate um, for a number of reasons income uh, uh, geography local geography um, Issues that it will take a lot of the, ch of the child welfare to truly tackle. It's gonna take more than the system itself to tackle. It takes really the community to kind of help spearhead that. That's, that's what we're kind of theorizing where, why some of that is. Um, the, some of those abuse rates have decreased over the couple, past couple of decades, but we're still seeing a higher level than we want to. And so we're still trying to work through that. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, all right. Any other questions? I, I just like to state that um, I really appreciate what you've done and what you do for a living because it, it's it's a gut wrenching job. Um, my wife and I had uh, exposure to the foster system and uh, with an employee that we were trying to help, and um, it just it, it's 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 a never ending uphill battle. It seems like, and the kids are just caught right in the middle and um, have nowhere to go. But kudos to you for what you do. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of, I would say there's a lot of good people in this community that, that is really working on this. Um, and even, and I think what really makes our community stand out is the fact that when we reach across the aisle to education, uh, to county government, um, to health uh, um, programs, they, they step up and they, um, we all hold hands in trying to tackle this very issue. So I think that's 
Um, other communities do the same thing, but um, I, I, I really, I, I guess I'm biased having <laughs> been born and raised here. Um, we really uh, work hard together to try to move uh, the needle on this. But thank you. Okay. All right. Calvin, thank you for your service, and, um, and, and uh, we appreciate this report. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll move down to item five, public comment. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It's not reasonable to expect that the board will engage or debate and deliberation about matters in which the board had received no prior information as part of the agenda. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, public comment cards are available at the entrance and the exit of the building. We appreciate if you fill those out and give them to Sarah Oliver, or clerk, the board, uh, over to your right, to my left. And our first speaker is Mr. Douglas Hayes. Please come forward and state your name and address and speak clearly in the um, microphone. Good morning. My name is Douglas Hayes, candidate for county commissioner. I live at 216 Hilltop Road, Satsuma. Um, kind of here to reiterate some things that I presented to you in the past regards to animal control, along with a, uh, a, a new discovery that perhaps some of your viewers might take interest. There's an outfit uh, it's referred to as Woof Tracks, W-O-O-F-T-R-A-X dot org. It's a program where you walk your dog, you sign up for an app, and um, you get accounted for the miles, and then the community, after they tally the number of miles, and they do donate money to your animal shelter. I thought that would be an ideal program that our uh, children can get involved with and our community. And they have uh, funding sources of their own, so it's not like they're reaching out to us for money. I have uh, mentioned it to Ms. Suarez, and last I knew, she's looking to see what it takes to be a recipient. But the next thing, once she's developed to where we are a recipient for those funds, is to advertise. Get with the school, get with the newspaper, announce it, get public interest. Um, I think it's good for uh, seeing how we have a health thing, and uh, you get accountability for walking your dog, which is a good thing, and children, it's just a win-win-win. Um, with that in mind, we have, uh, we'd be accepting donations, and the rumor has been that you don't want to donate money to animal control because it simply goes to general fund. Um, I'd like to let the public know from my investigation that <coughs> it does go to the general fund, but there is an account that's assigned to that. But I'd like to offer an idea for transparency along with the fact that traditionally the animal control services has bounced under the, gu the guidance of either the sheriff's office or the uh, building and planning is to go ahead and develop a animal services and rescue department. You don't necessarily have to have a director of that department because as an example, we have a health department with a blank slate. With that, because you have a tax, you have a fund, and you have a department, it, we would have transparency and accountability for all revenues. Uh, the other thing is I'd like to present, because I'm narrow with time, is that I have mentioned to you in regards to animal licensing, that when you get your dog tag for rabies, that is not a license. And so therefore, even myself, I'm guilty of it, is that um, the license is a separate fee. And so when you go to a brick and mortar um, veterinary clinic to get your uh, rabies shot, the reason it's a little more pricey is because your license is also included. The mobile clinics are not providing the licensing. They're from out of county, so I would suggest creating policy that when the mobile clinics conduct their business is to collect the fee. I'm still trying to get an accountability in regards to how many dogs do we have rabies. I've been uh, uh, communicating with the health department because it, some of the uh, guidance falls under the health department, and uh, Ms. Suarez may have a ledger also. but just to get an idea how many dogs do we have in the county that are at least vaccinated. With that number, um, I'm doing 
shooting off the hip ideas, but with a population of 75,000, and I know people that have two and three dogs, that let's say, hypothetically, that we have 60,000 dogs. At $5 for the vaccination fee for a dog that's fixed, that's a revenue potential of $300,000. Um, the last revenue accountability for last year was $39,000. That's worth getting out of bed and doing some investigation because we're running short of monies and revenues for animal services and 300,000, that's employees. Uh, that's partial for operating a nice facility. And so anyway, I would just wanted to reiterate that to see while you're in your budget and doing policy and stuff for the up and coming year is to approach those ideas. And then finally, I'd like to give grievance is that once again, the animal, um, advisory board meeting is going to be held at 9 o'clock in the morning in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm going to try to attend it, but when you get a poor turnout, it's because it's during the business day and people are at work. I don't see what, in fact, the people that are on the advisory board are either business owners, retirees, but they have lives. And they're kind enough to take time out in the morning to show up, but you're going to get poor participation. I don't see why you can't have it in the evening. And then finally, I want to commend you for having your first town hall meeting. I wasn't able to attend it. My resources didn't allow for me to travel all the way to Interlochen, but I hope that we have, you have continue that in districts so that everybody can have, have attendance. And thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Okay, any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion of the meeting. We'll move down to item six, the consent agenda. Uh, commissioners, any items you wish to pull? And we'll start to my right with Commissioner Goddard. I have none. Okay. Commissioner Rawls? I got a couple of questions on I. Okay, Commissioner Harvey? I have none, sir. Commissioner Turner? I have none. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the consent agenda except for item I. Second. Okay, we've got a proper, proper motion by Commissioner Turner, a proper second by Commissioner Harvey. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, Commissioner Rawls, um, item I. Um, I. I tried reaching out to uh, Mr. Tilton. Um, I may have the wrong number because there's not even voicemail on the county line, but uh, I was just wondering that the 1996 roll off container where it says too costly to repair, um, how do we dispose of that? Do we just auction it off or, um, and the same thing with the ambulance. There's a, uh, um, Ms. Julianne, uh, I know the answer. <laughs> Morning. I know this answer. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Um, as, as procedure with all items that are surplus, they all go into general services. And then after we gain the approval by the board to write them off, um, general services is authorized to find the best alternative. So we work with several different auctioneers, auction houses. Um, we work with gov um, deals that basically allows you to put it on a public auction site. So general services is authorized to dispose of them in the manner that we feel brings the most value back to the county for all items. So what, what would we what would we anticipate to get for uh, that old ambulance and the, um, the, roll, the, the, those are the two big ticket items on there, the ambulance and the roll-off and tanner truck. What would be the anticipated? Yeah, so processes, until we get formal approval from you guys to write them off, we haven't really evaluated them in our department. Um, okay. You know, some items are going to go straight to the scrapyard because they're not repairable. Um, some items we can work with different agencies um, to even, you know, we've worked with Pride before to say, hey, do you want to buy this from us? And y'all can refurbish it and take it away. So um, once we get the formal approval from you guys, then we go through that process. And will that part of the conversation be part of the process at that time? As to how much value we can bring back? Yeah, what roughly what it, what its value is or what it could be worth in the future to, you know, if we sold it or. Does it come back to the board is what you're asking me? Mm -hmm. No, sir, general services. I mean, you're saying when you bring it to the board to um, get approval to 
that's rid of this it. process that we, you have before you. Once we get the approval to write it off, General Services is authorized to go ahead and try to dispose of it and to bring the most, most, most value back to the county. Okay. I just, when, for tracking purposes on those two vehicles, because they're higher ticket items, uh, if you could let me know what the disposition and and that uh, was, and would you help me identify those two that you're interested in again? There's an M2 chassis and ambulance. Okay. Um, and the uh, 1996 40 yard roll off container. Not a problem. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming that's the one with the twisted chassis. There was, there was one that we had that was twisted and couldn't be repaired. Just a container, okay. it's not a, the, the ambulance, or are you talking about the roll off container? Roll off container, the container truck. Chairman. Commissioner Turner? It's just the dump. Um, oh, oh. I was thinking to say this commissioner oh, okay. doesn't need to see how much you're going to get for a damn wore out uh, trash <laughs> container. I, I think I have a little more okay, I, uh, to do with my time than that. So. No, I'm, I apologize. I, I thought it was a container truck. The, the, the no, truck sir. was the 2007 yeah. Sterling with, yeah. the, with the twisted frame. That's just the container, sir. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, okay. All right, Commissioner Harvey. I have seen a great grill made out of one of those containers before, though. So <laughs> we might want to keep grill. We might want to keep. You're welcome to bid on that auction. You can yeah, buy it and turn it into whatever I'm you want. I'm not scared. You know that. That's a, that's a big grill, but I want. There you go. <laughs> this commissioner wants you to eat off of it a few yeah. times before I do. <laughs> just, just the ambulance, and I just want, I want to try to get a feel for what. What the stuff goes for, and I've seen fire trucks sell for two and three thousand dollars, and at that point, it just seems to me like it'd be almost worth keeping and try to do something with it, or you know, leaving the community for something. But um, if we can get that, I appreciate it. Okay. okay. All right. Anything Thank you. Else? Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item I. Second. Okay. We have a proper motion to approve uh, agenda item I uh, by Commissioner Harvey and a second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mr. Chairman, we take a break. Okay, we'll take a three minute and 12 second break. <laughs> um, Chairman, it was his fault because he's over there. I, I gotta take a break. The Larry? What? I love my porch. No. I'd like to reconvene our uh, regular Board of County Commission meeting. And uh, commissioners, before we move down <coughs> to item seven, code enforcement, uh, Mr. Tim Smith would like to make a few comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this relates to the uh, consent agenda that you just approved. There was a number of items on there uh, that I wanted to speak to as your reluctant vice chair of the insurance committee. <laughs> I got I one friend. I got one friend up here. I, I remember you him. Volunteered. <laughs> yeah, right. You're gonna I, do a it's great like job. one of those things. Everybody take a step back. <laughs> yeah, that kind of volunteer. But I did want to um, uh, thank you for approving those. And you know, this has been a long process. And uh, these are kind of the comments that I made at the insurance committee meeting. But uh, because we're here at the Board of County Commission, I think it's important that we uh, uh, reiterate the progress that we've made over the past couple of years. And uh, you know, we've had a lot of folks, some in the audience that have helped, but one in particular that I wanted to mention was Clay Davis, and he's the chair of that committee and has really, he really uh, worked hard to help educate all of us on that. And uh, I was speaking with Brenda earlier, and, and I said, you know, I, I didn't know that health insurance was so complicated. Uh, you know, I just always had health insurance. You know, it's kind of like car insurance. You just buy a policy and you move on, but it's not that way. But because of the actions of that committee's recommendations to the board and your acceptance of those uh, to have a self-insured insurance uh, program moving forward, this now begins to give us an opportunity to, to do better work for our employees, uh, to offer them more op options for better health, uh, to provide more education, which in turn uh, gives us uh, healthier employees, which means we do better work for the public. So, it, I mean, it all works hand in hand. Right. And so uh, you five are to be commended for uh, uh, encouraging that discussion and that view and to accept uh, these um, items today on the consent agenda. And I want to thank you, but also wanted to thank Clay 
uh, because he really was a he is a great chair and uh I know he'll be there for many years to come. <laughs> you hope he'll be there for many years to come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And uh, Clay, thank you. I'm sure I can speak for staff and all of the uh, county commissioners for your hard work and all the members of the insurance committee, especially the subcommittee. And uh, it's been a long road, but it um, uh, looks like we're headed in the right direction. So thank you so much. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Harvey. You know, that was going to be on my comments too, Mr. Smith. <laughs> And, and go, we go back a few years back when, Mr. Davis, we started this process and, and um, we just weren't ready. Ms. Popel made it very clear that we were not ready for uh, the reserves, but through the hard work of our staff and the county commissioners raising our reserves up, now we're able to do that. And um, it's exciting. We, we all fuss about government going slow, but in this situation, I think it was probably the best way to go. And uh, we slowed that train down, and we regrouped and, and punted, and we started over. And uh, Mr. Davis, again, thank you uh, for leading that, leading that charge, because I'm sure at many times you probably wanted to go, look, I don't, I'm just volunteering. <laughs> I can go back to work. But it's important for, like Mr. Smith said, for our, our, our employees, who in a few years, uh, hopefully we can keep the rates steady, and if, maybe in a couple years we can start seeing those rates reduced. Um, and that's what we're all looking forward to. So the, the future is bright, and again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to make those remarks. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Rawls? I was going to do this under the Commissioner Comment Section 2. Mr. Harvey stole a lot of my thunder, but um, uh, I, I think it's really important to um, reiterate or iterate to the public that this will be a cost savings to the public. It will also be a cost savings to the employees um, immediately this year, uh, they're, they're not going to see an increase in their insurance premiums like they normally would. And going forward, if we uh, have year over year over year of no insurance uh, premium increases, that's realized savings as well. Um, I think eventually we get to the point where we might be able to reduce the cost of the employees, which would be huge. But um, also, this is a cost savings to the public. So uh, I think this, this commission, before I got in it, did 90% of the legwork and um, did a great job. So kudos to you all. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Any other comments? Okay, we'll move down to item seven, code enforcement. Mr. Charlie Erkman. Well, he's walking up here seeing how the clerk's already spoke. Does that mean we can scratch off item eight? <laughs> <laughs> brutal, isn't it? Yeah, it is brutal. Good morning, Commissioners. Good, Good morning. morning. Um, in all cases, what staff is recommending um, that this be reduced to is the cost. Um, we in no way have an opinion. If you folks lower it lower than that, we're good with that. So I'd like to start with the first one. It's 2017-0094-113 Valley View Drive in San Mateo, Florida. This property was previously cleaned up, previously cleaned up by the owner of the property that unfortunately had the property foreclosed on. We received a check in the mail from that bank for $8,350. The um, fines and fees were $8,568.50. I think we should take the money and run, and I'm asking you to reduce the um, fine, or to do a fine reduction of $218.50 on this Mr. property. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> on code case, uh, do we have to send these to a uh, for public comment before we can make motions on them, on fine reduction? No? Okay. No public comment, but do, uh, I, I should ask if the applicant or the landowner is here to In make a In this case, the bank is not represented, right. um, okay. and there are three other cases that I know of that they are represented, and I will let you know. Okay, okay. Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, on code case 2017-94, I move that we re uh, reduce the uh, fine or, or the uh, cost by $218.50. Second. Second. <coughs> then we've got a proper motion by Commissioner um, Turner, a second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. The next case is 2007 00326 104 Wynette Drive in Interlock in Florida. <coughs> Excuse me. This uh, property had been previously, previously cleaned up by abatement. Uh, 
there was uh, the uh, lot had then gotten overgrown and people had done some dumping there. It was purchased by uh, Mr. Willis Clements at tax sale. He's since gone in and cleaned that property up, cut it, and cleaned up the trash that had been dumped there. The original amount of fines and fees that were owed on this property is $24,374. The total cost of abatement to the county was $1,649. The total cost of enforcement and the enforcement action and abatement is $2,000. $976. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Clements if it's okay for him to come up. He wanted to speak to you about this. Mr. Okay, Clements. Mr. Clements. Mr. Clements, if you would uh, state your name and address and speak clearly into the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Willis Clements. Live in inter Interlochen. Yeah, I'm 82 years old. Too old to be up here. <laughs> and uh, I'm asking you to re reduce this fine. I've had major surgery two months ago. I'm scheduled for two more. And I'm not able to work. And I'm hoping you get this thing to $500 that I brought with me where I can pay it and clear this up. And I guess that's about all I got to say. Okay. Any questions, Mr. To work. The uh, doctor told me that uh, if I'd keep uh, taking the IVs and stuff I'm getting, that it He'd keep me alive another 10 years. So I don't know if I want to live to be 92 or not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Harvey? Sure, could I just one more thing? Okay. Charlie? Mr. Clements, I understand, is a little bit um, nervous about this. He has um, put a lot of work into this property. His intention is to put a mobile home on this and make it <clears throat> a tax producing property once again. Um, I applaud him. He's had uh, help with his family and everything cleaning up this property. So this is something that I, I think the, the county should really take serious consideration. He's doing exactly what we had hoped that our citizens would do. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Clement, the original amount of the fine was $24,000, and proposing right now that we go to $2,900. <coughs> so it's almost a 90% reduction in fees. These are our hard costs, though. And we are looking at that, trying to recoup our hard costs. The abatement hard cost was $1,649. And that is a very, we put that money back into future abatements that need to take place. So you're, for, you're asking today, did I hear you say you just want to pay out of the $2,976, you want to pay just $500? Is that what well, I'm hearing? This seems like a... little money to you but if no sir it's not a little money it, if you don't have it it seems like a lot to me. it's not a lot it's not but we did reduce it down 90 percent already oh, it's not you. a it's not a, li a lot of money it's a lot of money to me also so i'm just trying to ask what do you want done you if i can't pay, if i can't pay this i'll have to let it go back myself and it'll be sold again i was the only one bidded on it and i think this is why i didn't know this if I'd have known this, I wouldn't have been on I'd like to get it low as you will. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Turner. Mr. Chairman. Um, this is another one of those tax deeds purchases that basically if it had come back to the county, it would have been something that we'd have had to spend to abate again on top of having to abate it previously because of the extra garbage that was on there. Um, I see this as being like the like the um, the program that we've instigated trying to sell properties even if it's only for a dollar if it needs abating to get the property back on the tax rolls and get it cleaned up knowing that we can't clean it up. I think that uh, 
Mr. Clements has done a fine job buying the piece of property from tax deed like we wanted it done instead of just letting it go buy a sheetment back to Putnam County and then went in there and cleaned it up and spent the money and did the things he needed to do to become a, 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 a good neighbor and to bring the uh, property up to compliance and it, and it looks like all that's been done. Um, <clears throat> the only problem I'm really having with, and you know, one of the, you know, I'm, I want to also say that one of the lines to me that's drawn in the sand here in these kind of cases is if the man owned the property when the violation occurred and it took him 25 years to clean it up, that's a whole different ball game or five years to clean it up than it is if they buy it already with problems and then clean it up. That's where the line's drawn in the sand. Mr. Clements, it seems to me, like bought this place as a tax deed and cleaned it up. He wasn't the owner when the violation occurred. Is that correct, Charlie? Yes, sir. So that that's the difference to me here. So I don't see where this is any different than if it got a cheated back to the county, we'd sell it for a dollar to somebody else to go clean it up and fix it up, and we wouldn't get any of these fines back whatsoever. You paid the so, 1600 so I, that's what I would say, uh, Commissioner Rawls. Um, you know, I would be willing to cut it down to the county's hard cost that we had to write a check for, which is we had to go abate it at one time. That would be, and it comes out of our abatement monies, so those monies would go back into us being able to do this to another property. Mr. Clements, I'll ask you straight up. Do you think that if we drop this fine to $1,649 that you would be able to pay it to retain the property or not? Not today. I'll mean today. If we gave you 90 days. I could probably do it then. Okay, Mr. Chairman, my, my motion would be that we drop this fine to six, our hard abatement cost of $1,649 and give Mr. Clements 90 days to pay. Second. Yep. Okay, so we've got a proper motion to... Um, uh, reduce it an additional amount to 1649 we've got a proper second by I Commissioner I Rawls and I, I was gonna go to you okay so Commissioner <coughs> Rawls you have a comment um, just a question so uh, obviously we have the latitude to give them time to pay um, three months four months five months if, if I guess going forward if these numbers are larger um, is there any issue with if we gave somebody a year to pay a fine like this mm -hmm. Would that be an issue, or is, is there a time do we, uh, any time constraints by ordinance? Uh, Mr. Sure. Chairman, I don't know of in past that there's been an issue. It's just at some point you want to try to be lenient on somebody that's doing the public good, but not so lenient that basically you give somebody a year and you're back in the same spot again in a year. That's why I asked him if he thought he could do it in 90 days. If he told me no, he needed four months or five months, I'd have gave it to I mean, him. I mean, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to other issues. That yeah, might right, come I understand, bigger sir. Numbers. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Charlie, do you have a, a comment on that portion? We have, excuse me, one second. We've had issues in the past. We've had people before um, you folks and been given fine reductions and been given a year, and it seems the longer it takes that they just fall off the grid and we start all over again. So that's why code enforcement does recommend the 90 days. Okay. Um, and also we do take the latitude if, if a, one of your constituents are working with us and like Mr. Clems were to call me and tell me that I don't have it now, but I'll have it in another month. We do work with them with that. So as you know, our whole thing is voluntary compliance. We want people to comply. We do not say, sorry, too late. It's done. We work with people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. You know, <clears throat> Mr. Erkman, I appreciate that comment, but you know, I think when the board says 90 days, it's 90. And if we need to make a, a we need to make some type of concession for you to be able to work outside those parameters, I'm all for that. I would be willing to, you know, Mr. <coughs> Clement said he's got two two surgeries coming up within that 90 days. If that's going to be <clears throat> hard for him, let's automatically give two month extension if we need to. I don't care. And I'm glad, Mr. Clements, that you've cleaned this property up and you get it back on the tax roll. It is so refreshing to drive around these neighborhoods and see these properties are getting cleaned up now. So thank you very much. So yeah. Okay. That's all, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a proper motion. Um, we voted and voted on it yet, haven't we? Okay, we've got a proper motion and a proper second.
Uh, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. This next case is code case 2014-00789. The address is 122 Pats Point Court in Hawthorne, Florida. This uh, was an unsafe structure and care premises issue. This was purchased by on tax sale and it was cleaned up by the new owners. The original amount of fines and fees was 37, I'm sorry, $30,862 and our hard cost for enforcement was $1,733, which is what staff recommends we reduce this to. I do not know if anybody is here representing this property. Okay, is any the, um, anybody representing this property? Yeah. Okay. How you doing? Thank you. Please state your name and address uh, for the record and speak clearly in the microphone, please. My name is Jonathan Saunders. My address is 6415 Southeast 96 Terrace, Gainesville, Florida, 32641. So um, this is a similar case. My, um, we, we bought this property down the street from my buddy. Um, we're trying to clean up the, the area. Um, we cleaned up the yard and took off the the junkie mobile home on it um we um we'd like to we're you know we're trying to make money on this and we'd like to keep doing this um and i i like to see it too as kind of a uh partnership where you know we we can we can do this and clean things up and and then um get the get the property back on the tax roll clean up the area um and i was i was coming to see if um, there's anything that you can do to reduce the fine more, um, and and I wanted to thank you for for um, reducing it. Um, I don't know how it works exactly, but you you've sent the me a letter and saying saying it's being reduced. So okay, All right, Commissioner Turner. Okay, uh, this was bought on tax deed too. Uh, what what year was it bought on a tax deed? Does it say? I just missed oh, it. Yes. Oh, yeah. When was it bought? Yes. Yeah. When did you buy it? Um, it was. It was. Uh, yeah. It was the end of 2018. I don't mean exactly what year. Is oh. it last year? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was 18. Okay. 11, 11 8 of 18 is when we received. Uh, November. Okay. And then we sent them notice. They came in and they uh, put in for a. Um, demo permit for the mobile home around December and they had it demolished in January so they moved very quickly after getting the property they actually pulled a permit to <laughs> how and pulled that? a permit <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman I think this is another exact deal that we were just talking about a minute ago if, it, if this was a cheated back to the county the county would have just let it sit there until we could sell it to somebody with hopes that they would clean it up and we'd sell it to them for a dollar if necessary just to get it back on the tax rolls again. So with that being said, um, you know, I, I think on this one that, that, we, that I'd like to ask that we try to get the $1,733 that was the actual cost of the, of the action. Uh, do you think that would hinder you in being able to do what you want to do with that property? Um, I think it would, I mean, I think it would be possible to, to do what we're trying to do with it. Um, if, if we could get it reduced a little bit more, um, that would help us to, with, with funds right now. Um, is there a, is there, is there a breakdown, Charlie, uh, or Mr. Erkman, is there a breakdown in here anywhere of what was done as far as uh, fines and and violations previous to November of 18? Well, yes, I have that where <coughs> the fines are running. If I could make a suggestion, the one thing that is that is not a hard and fast cost would be the administrative monthly fee of $10 per month. That is, that covers us, you know, 
checking up on the property and make going back and making sure that there's no been no new ownership or anything and it seems to be a number that four hundred and ten dollars for that ten dollar a month fee seems to be something you all should be able to work with pretty well and that might help in this case well, I was thinking along the lines of like I've said earlier and I'm still believe hard believe I still believe hard that if you if you didn't create the problem and you bought the thing and fixed it up, you should not be responsible for what happened before you took over the problem. That's, I'm on the same page of the prayer book, um, sir. You know, the, when I was chairman of the codes board back when there was such a thing, instead of a magistrate around here, that's something that we tried to believe in through the whole process is that we weren't sitting there to make money. We were sitting there to get compliance and have the county cleaned up. That's why we were there. That was our job, get people to comply. It wasn't to make money. And so that's where I'm alluding to here today, and I did at the last reduction hearing, is that I believe that it's not our job to make money off these cases. It's to get them to come into compliance and get them back into the taxpayers' hands for, to where they're um, part of the... Uh, part of the tax base. So I'd be willing to for I'd be willing and open to suggestions from other commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Right. Commissioner Goddard's next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Erkman, um yes, sir. how much was the demo permit? There is no demo. I not sure. I don't I wouldn't have that information here. I could find usually, it but there you really remember about usually eight, fifty dollars commissioner. Oh fifty. It's eighty four eighty four dollars. Oh, excuse Thank you. Me. Okay, and then what did it actually cost you? The dumpster, uh, what, what kind of cost did you have in that? So it was it was over six thousand dollars for, for six thousand dollars to remove yeah, it. Yeah, and and there was yeah there there was more too, but that was the base, and they came back and wanted more. Mm -hmm. um, but yes. Okay, six thousand dollars after you got through with paying the contractors, paying the uh, did they handle all the removal? They handled most of the removal. Uh, we came back and we needed to remove. Um, There's a deck and a lot of a lot of um, a lot of debris that was left there. So we we thought it was actually done, and then and then they we had to come back. So okay, thanks. Do you have a question, yeah. Mr. Harvey? Then we'll go to Commissioner Rawls. You know, after that. what I love to do is sit up here and listen to the debate because it does make you want to change your mind. And what I just heard is you spent $6,000 to clean up this piece of property. I have to go with Commissioner Turner on this. Mm -hmm. um, we almost should be paying you to take this property off our hands and clean it up based on the cost. I mean, really, we appreciate that. Now, I've had a business owner in this county who says, hold true to those that $30,000 amount because that's what they owe us. But in, in effect, you're doing us a favor by cleaning up the neighborhood. And I think I heard you say, we want to do more. Is that what I heard you say? Yes. I applaud you, sir. Thank you for doing that, and thank you for coming out. And um, I'll be interested to see what the uh, number looks like, but I'm, I'm all for helping people who want to help us out. Thank you, thank Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rawls? <clears throat> so what is the property value, tax rule assessment? The tax rule has it for over 100000 but okay. we, we put it up for for way under that and have seen no no interest in it so so it looks like we might be holding holding it for All right um mr Erkman, what the sm fee the administrative and um fee slash sm and sm hearings what is that the sm hearings the special magistrate hearings that's uh, the hundred dollar administration fee. There was three of them, so that's why it's three hundred dollars. And in order to get to the point where we are going to abatement or foreclosure, you have to have the findings, fact, conclusion of law. Then, where we actually place the lien, three months after you put a lien, then you can go for an abatement or foreclosure. But it takes three separate cases with the special magistrate. Is our um, actual cost a hundred dollars? With the special magistrate hearings, it's that's not a bad estimate because of the time to prepare all the legal papers it does cost us to it's a breakdown it costs us about four hundred and fifty dollars for the special magistrate for the day so that breakdown is how many cases per day you have but um it is a lot of work that hundred dollars is is not that's okay. pretty hard fa but and fast money there and I, you you would recommend the four hundred ten dollars in administrative monthly fees 
Um, that's the only thing, Commissioner, that's not a hard and fast, like the mail and certified mail mm -hmm. recording, that's all hard monies, where the administrative monthly isn't a hard What about money. the administrative uh, fee slash special master fee for, it just says paid yes or no, and then it says $100 next to the it. The administrative fee for each one, um, whether or not they paid at the hearing, and they have not. So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You have an administrative fee of $100, but then you have a special master fee of $300 because there's three hearings. Yeah, thank you. That is a mistake on my part. That 100. Did the numbers it's, just it's go a up. Total of 300. That should that 100 goes down. Okay. So we're helping. Thank you, sir. So where are we at now? We're 100 hours less. We're 1,633. Going down 633. 1,633. Oh. Well, if, if we if we reduce the 410 that, that you'd recommended, that puts us at 1,200 plus or minus. Yes, sir. 1,223. 1,223. <clears throat> Was that a motion? Is that a motion? I'd, I'd make a motion that we reduce the fine to a total of $1,233, um, to try to help these gentlemen as much as possible, and please come back. Thank you. Second. We've got a proper motion on the floor to reduce this fine to $1,233. Twenty-three. $1,223. $12,223. $12,000. Excuse me. What was the amount? $1,223. Yes, sir. Okay. I had it up to twelve thousand. Then I was going backwards. Got a proper second by Good Commissioner. Government will like you. <laughs> Got a proper <laughs> second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? There is, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Harvey. I, I do agree with Commissioner Turner, though, in in theory, and I think we need to look at what is the hard cost for you once you take over this property, and I think that's where we need to go. Um, so in the future, I'd like to have that conversation of, you know. What's done in the past is done in the past. Now someone's come in and spent six thousand dollars. What's what's the cost to them at that point? What would be the hard cost to them? I'm, I'm not sure how I could get that information. Yeah. Presented yeah. I, know, I know that, sir. and I don't. I, we'll work yeah. on that. But yeah, Mr. <coughs> Turner. I think we need to be real careful with that, and the reason why is um, I think is. I'm trying real hard not to set a precedence here that basically all you have to do is is sell your sell your property to your brother and go on and clean it up and wipe out 30 years of code enforcement fines against you. So I'm trying real hard and be right. trying to be real delicate. You know, do you stop paying taxes, then go to buy the three certificates, go put them up for a tax deed auction, and all of a sudden you've just wiped out 30 years of fines. So I. I I know that on one hand we're trying to get these out of here. On the other hand, what do we do with the 40 of them that are sitting on Charlie's shelf over there next door that we can't we can't foreclose on because we don't have the money? And so basically they're just sitting there. We got all these fines that are unpaid. This commissioner feels like it's very unfair, if not downright wrong to go and foreclose on somebody's property and then the county not go and make it, bring it into compliance. That's just wrong. Yeah. They ought to be able to just keep their property if there's nobody going to take care of it after the sale. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I think that that's what we've got to be careful of here is that not sets any kind of a precedence if we don't, if we can't, even though this is exactly what we're trying to do. That's right. So okay. I don't know the answer. I just <laughs> wanted to make the comment. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, Mr. Rawls. Uh, Mr. So just pointed out, um, I did not include a timeline. I think we should include the same 90 days. That's appropriate. Yeah, okay. Second. Okay, you amend your motion. Okay. They add to 90 days, and so you amend the second. They add to 90 days. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of it saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. okay. Thank you. This next case is 2014-00736 for 1106 Stewart Avenue in Interlochen. A Mr. Steve Cullen purchased the property on a tax deed sale and he cleaned the property after the fact after buying it. 
The original amount of the fines and fees was $34,975. Our hard cost was $2,311. And that's what staff is recommending it be reduced to. Mr. Cullen is here in the audience. Okay, Mr. Cullen, will please come forward. Just state your name and address um, for the record and speak, speak clearly into the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable commissioners. My name is Steve Cullen. I live at 125 Half Moon Trail in Melrose. I've lived there since I was a boy. Um, I'm a retired engineer, um, but we that doesn't mean I have a pension or anything like that. <laughs> I've been buying and selling tax deeds in Putnam County and surrounding counties for five years now to supplement or actually provide my income. I'm very grateful to be in the presence of my friend, uh, uh, the clerk of the circuit court, um, Mr. Tim Smith, as well as the clerk of the commission, Sarah, who can verify that I have bought and sold no fewer than 37 tax deeds in Putnam County in the past five years. To me, that's a big number. Um, and this is only the second time I've had to come before you to ask for further reductions to code enforcement um, fines based on what code enforcement has provided. I'd like to mention again that I'm very grateful to Charlie and Mary at Code Enforcement. They're very professional to work with. Um, the last time I came before you, and some of you were, were commissioners, it was in uh, February of 2015, and uh, not only did I get a, a feeling of support from community leaders, but also the, com um, the director of planning and zoning at that time spoke to the same types of things that Mr. Turney is, is, is speaking to today. Yeah, I'll bet this, this is provides value. We had this morning made you real happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Birmingham these love. few before us have, have paved the way. Um, Mr. Chairman, with your approval, I've got some handouts that I'll give to Sarah to give to each one of you. Actually, I'd like to speak to this specific property. I bought this on a tax deed in November of last year. Um, no other bidders. You can tell by the first picture that this was a, a this was a bad one. And this is on Stewart Avenue, which is in, in Interlock and Lake Estates. We talked about interlocking this morning. This one was visible from the road, and you can see what it looked like. Well, not only was it terribly unsightly, it was dangerous. My girlfriend, thankfully, she's still my girlfriend, but it was about the second or third time we've been together. She helped me clean up out there one day. She got stuck with a needle under this trailer. Mm. And uh, thankfully there was no, uh, no injury or disease, but um, I'm grateful to hear this morning that you recognize that this is providing value to the county. I'd like to continue providing this kind of value to the county. I can't in this specific case unless you reduce your fines further. Um, I've done a little uh, chart of what it's cost me to remake, uh, to tear down that mobile home, as well as uh, my property tax costs, and it works out to be essentially identical, 9,100 bucks. I can't make any money on this property if I pay the fine as proposed by code enforcement. Um, I bought it to resell it, and I bought it to clean it up, resell it as a property with uh, well septic previous mobile home permitted property, in the interlocking area, which is where I'm concentrating because I'm living over in the western part of the county. Let me suggest that I'm proposing paying a $500 um, re further reduced fine, and I'll pay it in cash today if that's acceptable to the commission. And I'm, I'll pause there and, and take any questions you might have. Okay. Commissioner Rolf? <clears throat> so that you're, you're saying reduce it an additional 500 or 500 total? For the total fine, reduce it to five hundred dollars to be paid today. I, I would actually uh, where that might work well is with Charlie's uh, comments this morning. If we just take off, or if we start with taking off the roughly thousand dollars for monthly visits, then we're 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 already reducing quite a bit. Um, I don't see a thousand for monthly. It's four sixty. Mm. Administrative monthly. It's 460. That's, that's what I'm saying, unless I'm missing and that other 1,040 inspections and posting. Sorry, I don't. Uh, that, that's another one where I feel like I don't know. 
sorry, it was a different line item, but inspections and postings, I, I'm not certain that there was $1,000 worth of inspections and posting, but I don't know. I'm not questioning it, but I'm offering to pay $500 um, on this property to enable me to continue doing this work. And I'll add that I've got 12 tax deed applications in with the county right now. So I'm not only wanting to continue doing this work, I want to accelerate it and return these properties to tax paying status. Thank you, uh, sir. Per personally, and as a business owner, I. I can get to the 560 based on what we've done today. Um, you know, in, in business, it's, it's risky, and you win some and you lose some. Um, so if, if, if your goal is to break even or make a dollar, I think we can get you there. If your goal is to make $2,000, me personally, I would have a problem um, eliminating everything because the person standing to your left isn't free of charge to us either. We do have hard costs, in vehicles, uh, insurance, overhead. So. Um, I, I could. Uh, there was no. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, there was no abatement. The motion. Sir, there was no actual hard costs in terms of <coughs> abatement, which is one that we we often talk about. All right. Do you okay. think right, Charlie Mr. Turner? works for free? Pardon, Do you sir? think he works for free? I think that's a pretty hard call. Yeah. No, sir, and I'm not proposing zero okay. for that specific. I was being reason. smart. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> I'll try to be better. Uh, <laughs> Um, I think that what we're doing here, Mr. Chairman, we need to be very careful that we remain <coughs> consistent from case to case to case. The case previous to this one, we came in here and we, we dropped the administrative monthly fee and we dropped the extra $100 for the extra administrative fee that he put in there twice earlier and said it was a mistake. I think with the same mistake as on this one, the 100 and the 300 still on there. <laughs> Uh, right, so if that's the case, then we can knock 560 off, which would put us if we just remain consistent at $2,151. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we reduce this case to 20. That's not the correct that's amount. Right. Seven, 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 I got 1751. Uh, let me do it again. Okay, yeah. <coughs> Minus 460. 1751. Yeah. And you had the extra $100. Yeah. $1,751. Right. So Second we, that. Okay, we've got a proper motion uh, by Commissioner Turner. To and we we'll give him 90 days to pay it yeah. to remain to reduce it to seven, $1,751 with 90 days to pay. we got a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor and okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you all for right, the thank opportunity. You. I appreciate it right, very sir. much. Thanks, sir. Gentlemen, I apologize for that mistake. That is a written on my form, and I carried it down in two separate cases. I do apologize for that. That's embarrassing. It's not on the next one. <laughs> the next case is 2013-00110. For 127 Yancey Circle in Satsuma, the new property owner is Diamond Crest Companies, LLC. This, was, this property had been abated by us, and we cleaned it up. It was um, purchased by this uh, investment company and they bought the property already clean and clear. I do not believe anybody is representing them here today. I can tell you in their letter to us requesting a fine reduction, they had mentioned that they would like it reduced because basically they didn't do their research and they uh, didn't know that it had been, had fines and fees on it. So we're recommending that we reduce it. The abatement cost of this was $2,250. Um, the hard cost of actual getting to that point was $800, and that is correct. The special magistrate hearings in this case was eight, because when we go to abatement, we have to have separate hearings, and then we also have to have an abatement lien put on it. So in that one case, I didn't mess up the math. That's correct. So we're, we're recommending that we uh, the original amount was $14,878.50. We recommend that we reduce that to our hard cost of $5,785 if paid within 90 days. Okay. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner um, Turner. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I was just um, 
basically wondering how he wound up, how did he get this property? How did, did he, is it a tax deed? Did he buy it on a, a foreclosure sale? Did, I think or this did he a own the property sale? when the problem, when the uh, violation occurred, did he own the pro property? No, sir. They bought this, and it's a quick letter they sent. I'll read it to you, sir, because it's really addressed to you folks. Dear Putnam County. I see that. We have I, it. Oh, you saw the letter? Yep. Yes. You don't want me to read it in the record? But it doesn't really... Doesn't really say where he got it at. He said he bought the property, owned the property <coughs> in January of this year, uh, but he didn't say from where he purchased it. There were no liens, he thought. He tried to sell it yesterday. Was this a tax deed that he bought in January of this year? Or? I don't have that knowledge, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Rawls? Um, in the interest of fairness and uh, continuity, I'd I'd offer a motion that we reduce the fine to five thousand five dollars, reducing the uh, administrative and monthly fee. Seven eighty. I think that's consistent, and because of that, I'll second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Got a proper motion by Commissioner Rawls and proper second by Commissioner Turner to reduce it, reduce it to five thousand and five dollars. Okay. With ninety days, With 90, I'm assuming. Yes, With ninety days. <clears throat> okay. okay. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor and kept it saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. The last case is 2017-00144 at 112 Maryland Avenue in Crescent City, Florida. It was an unsafe abandoned structure and had care premises issues. This was uh, purchased by Mr. Cartwright, who's walked up here. And Mr. Cartwright purchased it on a tax sale and as he's done on many properties, especially in the River Park East um, area of Georgetown, he came in immediately and got a permit, cleared the property. I was the one, the building inspector did both uh, inspections on it. I don't think he had the property a week. He was in there clearing the thing up. Our uh, original amount of fines and fees is $4,243. Our hard cost of enforcement is $1,114. Good morning, Commissioner, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I, it sounds a little ridiculous to come up here and ask for a fine reduction when something only started at 4000 But to give you a basis of um, most of y'all in here know me and know that I have, um, I don't know, I'm upwards of 25 or 30 in that one subdivision. And when you talk about hard costs, it costs about six grand to put that thing on the ground and have, have the dumpsters. Now I'm on tractor, so I do a bunch of my own work when I have time off. Um, so the dumpsters uh, run a little over 4,000 permits. Uh, when I do one, then I seed and straw it, and I mean, it looks like it should uh, for future use. I don't want to tell you all that I'm d doing this to flip the, the land. I'm not. I'm going to, uh, I think I got about 20 empty lots in there now, demos and empty lots I bought. So let's talk about the cost of an empty lot in there. A lot cost in there on the empty lots, you can buy a lot anywhere in there. Uh, of course, it's not on the water side for about six thousand dollars. So, by the time I paid the tax deed fees, it was about forty six, forty seven hundred bucks. Got about six thousand in the demo. I'm in the property for about ten thousand now. Is that property worth ten thousand dollars to me? It is to me. It is to me. I couldn't sell it to you for ten thousand, but I happen to be in the rental business, so I'm going to buy homes and put there. Is is what it is. So I'm not trying to plead the case that I'm I'm broke or sick. It's not. I think we're in partnerships in what we're doing in the county, um, and I've been before y'all on multiple things of trying to improve. So I would like for you to, in whatever you think is fair, that or Charlie thinks is fair, the group does together, of what you could reduce this to further would just put money back into my reinvestment. I have four on the blocks now in River Park that if I end up with them on the tax deed sales, I'm going to put them on the ground or bring them into compliance. Um, I've got probably 15 that Charlie could tell you that were houses that were sitting there that somebody was probably paying homestead on or something, but they were not productive properties. And that means there was nobody living in it, buying nothing at the Circle K or the dollar store or working in the county. Um, I know the commissioners have done their work because Com Commissioner Pickens mentioned the other day he knew I'd paid over $16,000 in taxes last year on $20,000 mobile homes. That's quite an assortment of mobile homes. But what we have done is add to everything. 
and that's, you know, I was talking to the sheriff outside, talking about how we think the park is cleaning <coughs> itself up. So we're all working in this together, and I applaud the other gentleman that says he's helping in another area of the county, because this county needs that help. But what I would like to, to bring to the commissioners is, all of these costs were assessed and caused before we got here. Now, if somebody was smart enough to sell it to their first cousin to get around y'all, you would eventually catch them. But from outsiders like us, that's not what's happening. We're bringing money here, putting it into the county, and I hope to branch out and get in other parts of the county. I bought one on your last county sale, and um, that property will rent the first of next month. So it hit, I don't know how long y'all had on 116 Peninsula, but for God knows how long. Uh, but they will be the renter in that house, paying electric, paying water, buying gas, buying beer and bologna. So, the, so that's what we're here for is what I'm here for. And they paid me rent, which just makes me money. But I, I appreciate the opportunity to come before you and thank you for the, the broad conversation that you're having because you understand that them sitting still. So I went out and looked at 12 properties that's coming up for sale next Monday. I'm going to bid on two of those properties. But what I find the problem with that, if I can have a little attitude, Chairman, what I find the problem with that is, so let's take two, one in Crescent City and one in Pronoma Park that are, I think the guy's right. Buy them, put them on the ground, and either sell them to the neighbor so they got a bigger lot. You may not want to put a home back on it yourself or split it and sell them to each neighbor. But if you've got fines, tax abatement, and the demo, you have more in the lot than what it's possibly worth, you're going to keep ending up with them. They're not going to sell next week. So we got to find a way to have a happy medium. And I know Charlie's done spent this money, but if they don't sell next week, there's no joy. You haven't got anything accomplished. But if we could find a medium to where if a person was going to make this a productive piece of property that we could figure out how to work, work it in and get them done quicker, wouldn't spend less money. So I think I think y'all are headed the right direction. If any part of this conversation that I'm willing to I'm willing to help you to get in this, because eventually it does well for all of us. If Putnam grows, I grow. Thank you for your time. Anything that y'all will give me in <coughs> excess of what I've got, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thanks, Bobby. Sir. Can you state your address for the just for the record, yeah, please? Uh, the address I'm using here is 127 Tennessee Avenue. Okay. 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 Thank and you. thank you. Thank you for what you've done in the park, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think it would be real easy to just remain consistent and do the same thing on this one that we've done on the other two, which is basically take the administrative monthly, which is only fifty-five dollars off the eleven hundred and fourteen. I believe that makes it as ten sixty-nine, unless I missed it again. Mm -hmm. um, so I move that we drop this one for ten to a ten sixty-nine thousand sixty-nine dollars. Second. At ninety days. At ninety days. Thank you, Commissioner Goddard. Okay, so we've got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner. We have a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? <clears throat> okay, all in favor of Kevin saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, before you, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, before you leave, uh, would, and I guess uh, Mr. Sioffi needs to at least shake his head in agreement here. I'd like to talk some about possible solutions to the, I don't know what you'd call it, the shelf of 40 or whatever it is where you got all these cases that we're having problems with and big fines and we don't exactly know what to do, we don't own them so we can't sell them. I, I don't know. I, I, there's got to be some kind of a solution to that. Um, and, and those are cases for the rest of the commissioners that are in bad shape, never cleaned up, we have fines and fees running and a lien on them. The next step is to take them to abatement or foreclosure to the special magistrate, but there is really no sense doing that. <clears throat> or ones that have been through abatement and foreclosure and need to come before you folks for you guys to vote on it. But we have 40 houses on a list now that we can't afford to abate. So basically, um, Mr. Siafi has instructed me well, to keep them on a shelf until such time as we have money to do something with them. Well, also, I'd like to know if we have some kind of a an idea or a budget figure on what somebody around here thinks it costs to go ahead and abate some of those properties. I know it's not very popular and it's not very sexy, but I'm not so sure that we don't need to start doing some of that. 
Um, it, it single wide is usually, from what I see, historically about 5,000, a double wide to clear off, depending on the debris on the property, is between six and 7,000. Well, I know there's 40 of them, but I think we need to start with age and move from the back to the front, but then if we decide to abate them, maybe that's the way we go, and then go ahead and let them go from there. Uh, has somebody been paying taxes on the property? If they have, then that that's maybe not so good we can because we can't get our money back unless we foreclose on the abatement uh, so anyhow like I said instead of getting into the weeds today if we could just maybe do a workshop presentation <coughs> keep those in mind along with I know that we've got uh, general services we've got some stuff going on too trying to sell those other properties that we do own maybe we could have a little update on all that does next Tuesday give you enough time to have this update a week or Aren't we having a workshop Tuesday a week from today? Do you think we could get that maybe on that workshop, uh, Mr. Subs? We can bring an update as far as where we're at with the sale of the properties, well, and then we can talk about the uh, to yeah, the new process. stuff here that we haven't really talked about yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, Your the, agenda's getting heavy, I'm but we'll, we'll figure it, it out. I'm gonna call it the shelf of forty, just where everybody <laughs> will know what we're referring to. There. Yeah. Yes, and if everybody doesn't know, there's a there's forty literally 40 files over there that need abatement that are on a shelf that we don't own and we haven't put money in to abate them. Let so I think we need to at least start talking about what we're doing. And I think this is a good place to start. It was my decision, uh, just so uh, everybody's clear today, uh, to, <clears throat> to hold off on moving forward on those 40 till we got the others cleared out that we're going to be selling and getting through the process and getting some of these uh, cases cleaned out that Charlie found that needed to have the have the uh, fine reductions heard by, by U5. Uh, so it's just a process, and yes, we'll go ahead and start that conversation Here, about the I shelf of 40. I don't think I was being uh, no, no, I'm, at all. No, I'm just like making it. sure that staff understands it was my decision. Okay, no, I, I get it. Not, I not Mr. Cioffi's or Charlie's. I don't think I'm being critical, guys. I just would like to start having that discussion on what do we do. We're trying to uh, clear clean this stuff up a, you know, a section at a time, so I think we're making great progress here. Thank you. I got, a, I got a question. Okay. Good. Commissioner Rawls. Regarding this, is it possible to, ha to set a policy that would give these guys a latitude to reduce that extra amount without having to come in here um, or, or, you know, give them a, a, a plateau that if they stay below that, like in this case, our, I think our, our maximum was $550, but, uh, you know, going in there and, I mean, if somebody comes in for a fine reduction, I give them latitude to say, like, the commission's been doing this in the past and right. <clears throat> this Commissioner, is it. Commissioner Turner. I think we'd be setting a terrible precedence mm -hmm. if we started letting staff without commission approval reduce a fine from $34,000 down to a th two, 3000 or whatever it is. I think that needs to come to us. Okay. okay. Mr. South. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I think the ordinance calls for you guys to approve those lien reductions. So I kind of like to keep it at that. It's your, it's your money. So. I just wanted to keep talking long enough that you just had to walk I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> just can't stand it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's yeah. all I have. Charles, do you have another comment? No, sir. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your job, Charlie. I know that you and Tom and them really catch it in that code deal. I know you've switched over partially into uh, building inspections, but we still appreciate it that you're helping some in codes, too. Uh, Julie did our air conditioner bust. It's hotter than hell up oh, here. Oh, it feels good up here right yeah, it now. Got Thank God. <laughs> I'm thawing she, out. I think she went over. And made, she made a slight adjustment a few minutes ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll sweat. We move down to uh, item eight. Closing comments, uh, Mr. Tim Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to uh, Commissioner Turner's chagrin, I do have a couple more comments. <laughs> That's no chagrin to me, my friend. <laughs> I know, and if I have the opportunity, I'll do it again, so just, just so we know that. Um, just because I got you to be vice chair of the insurance committee? Yeah, I know it, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll pay back that for a long time. Um, I thought it was interesting that we just had these code enforcement uh, uh, firearm reductions uh, come up here that resulted from uh, some of them a tax deed sale. Mm -hmm. So I want to mention that this Thursday, uh, there's a coffee and conversations meeting uh, being held at the tax collector's office with uh, Linda Myers and myself and some of our staff on the tax deed process. Um, for many of you that know this, there's two parts to this. One, 
there's the tax certificate sale, which happens from the tax collector side. Uh, once those tax certificates are held for the allotted amount of time by statutes, then the applicant can request a tax deed sale process. Then that moves over to the court side because it potentially is a taking of property, so they want that part to be in the court uh, realm. So that comes over to our office, and then we hold a tax deed sale. Uh, our tax deed sales now are online, and I actually wish that those guys that were here today would come down there because they really know the ins and outs of the tax deed process. Uh, as a non-user of the system, and I am required by law not to be a participant in any of those processes because I'm the auctioneer, uh, sometimes I can speak on how the process works, but I don't know the the finesse and the fineness of those that actually do this uh, day in and day out. Uh, but anyone uh, in Putnam County that would like to know more about how this works, this is a good opportunity to come down. It'll be between uh, the hours of 9 and 10 at 321 St. John's Avenue. Uh, that's the conference room for the tax collector's office, which some folks know as the barbershop building. So. Uh, you don't know where that is. It's right next door to the east side of the tax collector's office on St. John's Avenue. So we would invite anyone that has interest in that process to come uh, Thursday and uh, get kind of a primer on it. And then, of course, our staff is always available anytime during the process to help uh, folks navigate through that system. So thank you. Uh, secondly, I did want to mention that um, we have uh, recently received $542,000 FEMA reimbursement. That's uh, come back to the county. Uh, so we're continuing to uh, make progress on that. There were two um, road and bridge uh, accounts that uh, were part of that, also some protective measure money and d debris removal. So that total uh, was 542000 And that, Mr. Chairman, that's all items I have today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> okay, we'll move down to appointments, um, starting with Commissioner Harvey. Any board appointments? I have none, sir. Okay, Commissioner Turner? I have none, sir. Okay, Commissioner Rawls? I have one. I'd um, like to uh, reappoint Ms. Ann Heisman. Um, I did reach out to her and she agreed to serve another term on the um, library board. Okay, all right, that's a district appointment, so I don't need any motion or voting on it. Okay, and uh, is that all of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Goddard? I have none. Okay, and I have none. Okay, we'll move down to closing comments. Um, County Administrator? I have none this morning, Mr. Chairman. None? Okay. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> there is something that we need to discuss, uh, but I didn't know if it's going to come up under Commissioner comments, so I'll wait, and if, there, if it doesn't come up, then I can bring it up then, but I figured it may come up under Commissioner comments. Okay. All right, um, county attorney. Uh, I have nothing to add. Make, making Mr. his Chairman, thank second you. second meeting with us, uh, <laughs> Mr. Joe DeNovo. Okay. No comments. No, nothing to add, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. All right. Closing comments. We'll start with Commissioner Rawls. I have none. Okay. Commissioner Goddard. Yeah, I do. We had the uh, town hall meeting out in the interlocking area. It was uh, well attended. Uh, I have to say, it was really the, the Matt show. Matt Reynolds did a fantastic job in <laughs> displaying how our budget comes in and how it is distributed and uh, basically understanding why we do not have <laughs> piles of money to do all the things we gotta do. But I also wanna talk about this, this commission up here and and they've made some hard choices. I mean, I've been part of it. We've made some hard choices, but we have, you know, given our employees raises, we've gotten our insurance under control. Uh, we have done very conservative with our budget, and I'm very proud of these guys and what we've accomplished. You know, I can't leave this without saying, get out, see Putnam County. We've always got something going on, and it is a gorgeous place to live. Thanks. Thank you, Chris Goddard. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I too want to, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you on agenda item J. Uh, that was something that came to us about buying some vehicles. <coughs> this commission looked at that, decided to put it out for bid, 
and a local vendor was able to buy it. I mean, bid on it and get the bid. So uh, that's always great when we can deal with our local people. And I just wanted to thank this commission for the diligence and the, and the foresight to do that. I also want to say, moving the property back on the tax roll, it's exciting. I know we're, we're getting a little frustrated on some of the items, um, but it's exciting to see what's going to happen. I look forward to the file of 40 um, on the shelf to see what's going to take place there. Um, but there's an answer to this, and we just got to find that answer. And the ultimate goal is compliance and getting these back on the tax roll. And um, this board is really pushing that needle forward. Like I mentioned earlier, thank you for the uh, self-insurance fund, how hard we worked on getting that done, and uh, now it's the right time. And I do want to also say thank you for the budget meeting that happened out in West Putnam a few weeks ago. Um, well attended, very good. We kept tried to stay on topic for most of the issues. Um, it is a budget meeting that we're, this board decided to go out into the outline areas to have these conversations, to bring the budget out to people that frankly can't come into Palaka. And we did that in West Putnam. We're going to do that in South Putnam. And I don't know where else we're going to go to that. But it doesn't prohibit any commissioner to take that budget and go to any place in the county to have any meeting that they want to have. I plan on going um, more out in West Putnam, and I'll let you know when I do that. But it's not a requirement for all of us to show. And I do want us to stay on topic when we're there. I think it's very important if we're going to branch off and have other conversations, we need to do that in a different format than what the budget's going to be. Uh, those are town hall meetings that we can do in the future and say, okay, what interests you? But for now, the budget is the main thing. And let's keep the main thing the main thing when we're out there. Um, right now, it's important that the general public realizes that we had over 30 people in West Putnam. And Commissioner Turner, you did a good job filling in for our chairman who could not be there for a prior engagement. And we can't be at every place. But we were stayed on topic. We moved that product forward, and we got some good feedback. Got some questions asked. Um, it was kind of funny. I even got a question asked about a road, and I said, "Well, your town council members and your mayor's here tonight. That actually a road in the town of Interlock." And so, you know, I told them not to fight a battle that you don't own. And I've learned that in this business. But I tell you honestly, it's great to see that we took that budget on the road and this foresight of this commission in doing so. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Commissioner Turner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a couple of things. Um, the, uh, I agreed to do a town hall in the west end, a town hall in the south end, and possibly one in the center here, but we never agreed to it. Um, I, I guess that there's been several of them put together. Um, without the knowledge of the commission and just said, okay, we're gonna have a town hall on such and such a day show up. Well, whoever's setting them appointments up don't have the authority to set up stuff on my behalf. So I'm, I'm asking that before we set up any more town halls or whatever, that we talk about it at a workshop and we decide what date we're available because we can't talk about it on the side. That's a sunshine violation. So we talk about it at a workshop we try to come up with dates that were available and if we want to meet. Um, my case in point is the American Legion. I love them guys, they're fine, but the town hall is not a political event and that's what they're trying to m make this into at this particular instance is possibly after talking to Stan is probably a, 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 a political event. That's not what I signed up for. Uh, on the town hall meetings. I think if we're going to have a center town hall meeting, pick a day. We'll have it at night right here. We've already got cameras set up so they don't have to take the cameras and all the microphones and set them up on the road to have those uh, recorded like we're trying to do the town hall meeting. So anyhow, I, I would just appreciate if we just talk about that and dates and if we're going to do them and where and workshop because these are not political events. There's time to campaign <clears throat> and there's a time to govern. We can campaign next year, or who, whoever's running can campaign next year. This year it's time to govern as well as next year. But we don't need to just start having campaign events just because we want to. 
Um, the other thing is, is I'm not sure who we talked to, uh, Mr. Suggs. I don't know. Um, I've been contacted, and and it's pretty bad that the uh, parking ride in East Black at 207 and 17 has got to be the nastiest spot in Putnam County. It's probably nastier than than uh, out there at the landfill. So now that we got Mr. King of Trash taking care of it. Uh, but anyhow, that, it's pretty bad. Who do, I know it's DOT responsibility. Who Do we know who to contact a press, Terry? Do we know who to contact to re, uh, get a commissioner request that they clean that filth up? It's bad. It will, Okay, well, yeah, they're the ones could you send it over there telling them it was a commissioner request or if that makes any difference, I don't know. But uh, tell them, you can give them the website and tell them to watch TV. I wasn't kidding. Um, the, uh, and the last thing I want to do is here a week or so ago, we had another cookout. For me, I go to a couple of them a year. He goes one all the time. Um, but he set this one up again, and I think he needs to have uh, the kudos for doing it. I've said to him many times before that it's easy to cook with Larry and Buddy because you show up and, all, and you've got an apron in one hand and you got your tongs, excuse me, your tongs if you decide to bring them. But other than that, they do all the cleaning, they do all the getting ready, all the bringing the stuff, all the, uh, they even, we did help them put, I think, uh, Commissioner Piggins and I did help them put a charcoal in one of the three grills. <laughs> but, but other than that, I mean, we, we basically show up and cook. These guys do it all. And then when we're done, I got in my truck and went home. They cleaned up. They hooked up. They pulled these things where they need to go to get them done. So I just want to say thank you to Commissioner Harvey and Commissioner uh, Goddard for uh, doing this and and it's not something they get paid for as part of their job. They just love doing it. So uh, thank you, guys. Mr. Chairman, that's it for me. Okay. And I'll also uh, add to that. It was for the 4-H um, livestock judging uh, fundraiser they were having, and we cooked last year <coughs> for them. And uh, Larry, they asked Larry to do it again, so he asked if we wanted to help. And like Commissioner Turner says, all you have to do is show up and uh, with an apron and some tongs, and they do everything else. So I think we cooked, what, about 200 steaks? Did, in about a 45 minute period and then uh, and they had already started cooking 200 <coughs> potatoes too so uh, a lot of work for them but it was very enjoyable and I'm, I'm sure with the turnout it was a good fundraiser for the 4-H. Um, I would like to add um, I do apologize I was not able to attend the uh, the forum or uh, the uh, town hall meeting in Interlochen. I did have another commitment I was at the party in the park in Pomona Park and I want to thank Jim and um, Shirley Griffin for their efforts with the Neighborhood Watch down there. There are probably 75 people there. A lot of people from the county um, uh, was, was there. Uh, Representative Payne was there. Some people from the um, uh, state's attorney's office. Uh, Charles Overturf was there, so it was a good turnout. And I appreciate um, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Turner uh, chairing that meeting for me. And speaking of meetings, what I understood that the commission had pretty much just given wave of support was to have, you know, one in the west end, one in the central, and then one in the south. So um, actually, uh, Commissioner Rawls had mentioned it to um, uh, uh, Mayor Peterson's wife, Chris Peterson, about having one in Crescent City. So she actually started scheduling this. So I would like to get approval today, right uh, during this meeting, so we can talk about the advertisement. Um, for August 22nd, which is a Thursday at 6 p.m. at the Crescent City Women's Club. Because um, after I understood that we had a wave of support to do this, I was gonna go ahead and schedule that. So the Women's Club is accepted. They're not gonna charge us for the facility. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. Um, August 22nd, which is a Thursday. So I don't know if we have to have a motion for that or just an, an agreement. Um, Chairman. <clears throat> um, I could give a little bit of background because I'm, I'm the bad guy in all this conversation regarding these town hall meetings and it, it goes back about six months ago when um, the American Legion asked me if there was any chance that we could start having town hall meetings um, to engage with the public. So I, I told them yeah, um, kind of left on the shelf. They came to me a couple months ago and asked if there was any interest in it. 
um, about the same time back when uh, we were having our leadership turnover at Rotary, uh, Mayor Peterson's wife approached me and asked me if I'd be willing to come down to Crescent City and meet. And I said, sure, but if you're gonna set up a meeting, why don't we invite all the commissioners? So I just wanna set the record straight that this isn't the Commissioner Rawls out there doing this. This is the public requesting it. On the 22nd of August, um, Barden Fire Department has scheduled a town hall meeting at the, at the uh, Barden Fire Department. Mr. F um, Roger Bush uh, asked me back, <clears throat> excuse me, in February, after hunting season was over with, if we could have a town hall meeting in, in, um, in Barden because they have a lot of specific questions they would like to ask. Um, the Boswick Community Association, same thing. So um, I will not be able to make that meeting. I'll be at the Barden Fire Department um, addressing the public there. Um, but I just want to set the record straight that this isn't, I, you know, I, I don't get the feeling that I'm, I'm an outcast or I'm out here by myself, but, you know, I'm out here by myself with regards to that. Um, it, I'm getting a lot of requests from the public for this commission to take their act on the road and have conversations about the county as a whole. Um, they, for the record, the American Legion has requested for a year. They'd like to do one a quarter on a Monday night. They, they can schedule it out well in advance. They're willing to open up their canteen. It's not a political event, contrary to um, any other comments made. It's simply a town hall meeting to engage the public. At the last meeting, there was a comment made that we should um, have to engage the clerk of court to make sure that we have somebody there to record the meeting and take um, minutes. Um, in talking with uh, Mr. Sniffen's office from the FAC, um, reading a, Attorney General's decisions, um, it, it, all we have to have is somebody there taking minutes. It doesn't have to be recorded, doesn't have to be videotaped. Somebody has to be responsible to take minutes like we do in some of our other committees as a county. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a, a formal event. It's just us getting out and talking with the public and hearing from our constituents. Um, I hear from every day anyways in my district. I hear from other districts as well, but it's just a way for us to get out and engage them. I mean, no, I commend you for <clears throat> bringing it to the attention and actually having the conversation with Ms. Peterson um, because I had a long conversation with Ms. Peterson after you talked to her and it was good for both of us. I, I asked Chris why she didn't reach out to me. She said, I felt you were too busy. So we got that taken care we're of. having dinner. Exactly. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, so that's what I would like to do because I would like to do the one in Crescent City and I would like to you know, have staff there. I would like to have the minutes taken. I would like to have it videoed so people can turn around and watch this yeah. on YouTube yeah. for the people who just can't get out, period, whether it's in the morning or whether it's at nighttime. So, um, I really think we should consider making this more than just a here's your budget conversation and now we're going to close the meeting out. Um, I, I've watched the meeting twice. Um, already and I'm going to have some stuff added to that. Um, I'll give staff plenty of time. Um, but yeah, I think there's some other things should, you know, our paving projects probably should be mentioned. You know, some of the infrastructure uh, issues that we've had over the last two years probably ought to be, you know, brief comment about that. So roads and dishes um, I'm hearing a lot about. It. Exactly. So. The only thing that I request and I don't know how many of these I'm going to go to because right. if it, if it I don't mind going to a nighttime town hall if it's a real town hall. Right. If it's a fundraiser for an organization nope. that wants to sell a few more hamburgers by getting the commissioners down there, I'm sorry, you know, if I can get there, I will, but otherwise, no. So um, I, I guess that, uh, you know, and, and a commissioner can always set up, That's right. can set it up to go talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. If he wants to take his buddy with him and talk to him, they can do that also if they want to. They just need to advertise it if there's two of them, right. that there may be one or more commissioners at this meeting. Um, I would like to, uh, for the one in South Putnam, I would like to try to follow the same plan that we followed in West Putnam where, where we have a structured informational meeting. That's what, to me, what a town hall should be, is a structured informational meeting. Pick the subjects you want to pick and do the very best to inform the public of the budget. We're in the budget process. Add the things that uh, that uh, Mr. Chairman wants to add, that's all fine. But I think it's got to be structured where it doesn't turn into a big whining contest. And I, and I, I mean that with respect, I really do. Um, and so, uh, but it's got to happen or, or we'll not get anything accomplished that we're trying to accomplish, which is 
informational education to the public at a time they can't come. And uh, then if we decide to have one here during the, uh, I, I wouldn't mind having a formal one here at some point, maybe just a little later in the year than it is right now after we get through the budget and after we what do have a one here and have it at night and, and invite as many people as we can and try to give it as much uh, advertisement as we can to where everybody can come in here at night time and sit down and do the same thing. I don't know exactly what the informational portion of it will be at that time because if we try to plan what it's going to be now, it may not be an issue in two or three months. So um, that's just me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Ross. <clears throat> so part of the, the, the process of the town hall meeting is, is public input and, and, you know, listening to the, the county that we serve. Um, you know, obviously, we, we have over 73,000 people that we answer to. Um, not being able to hear from them is to our disadvantage and their disadvantage. And uh, Ms. Peterson um, said that she thought you were too busy. Well, that, you know, that was an assumption that she made. There's a lot of assumptions that are made about us as commissioners and about the county as a whole. And um, I do get the sense that there's some sense of disenfranchisement from some of the voters. Um, you know, this is an opportunity again for us to get out and talking with senior staff. They would like more revenue. They would like to see our budget increase. I don't think that, that there's a chance over the next three to five years that we're going to see any significant increase on the path that we're on right now. As a matter of fact, it would actually, it could turn into a decrease. Um, so I, I think that we need to get out there and have these conversations because the public is the um, stakeholders. And in my estimation, and I know Mr. Turner disagrees, um, you know, we may have to look at other sources of revenue. Uh, it's, it's been suggested by staff, and I, I think that we owe it to the public to at least have the conversation, see if there might be some buy-in from them, and if there is, maybe we come out um, with, with a different looking budget next year or the year after. But uh, e either way, um, anything that needs to be on the ballot in, in 2020, not saying this is a political issue, but if we were to look at proposing something, we would have less than a year at this point to get the, the, the public educated on what we're trying to propose, if anything. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I may, please, uh, seeing how he brought this up, and it <laughs> is a campaign issue, and hell no, I'm not voting for <laughs> raising taxes or raising fees. <laughs> the county needs to live within their means. If we, raise, if we get more money, we need to do it through a broadening of the tax base, not by jacking everybody up with more fees and more taxes. Yeah, you betcha, I'm not for that. So I think before we waste a lot of time on taking that show on the road, we need a vote that is there anybody on this commission that agrees with jacking up uh, taxes and, and, uh, and fees other than you? Because well, if you don't have at least three votes, you're wasting our time. I, I think it's unfair for you to say jacking up taxes when we're not talking about jacking up taxes necessarily. We it's semantics, it. Jeff. It, taxes are taxes, fees. Okay, well, we're not going to raise taxes. We're going to double all your fees. But if, if, hear me out here if you wouldn't mind. So we, we balanced the budget this year um, and we didn't have to raise um, taxes and we were able to increase the reserves. But talking about semantics, what we did was we took positions that general, general services or public works or um, fire and EMS has that are, that are vacant positions and we use that money to bolster our general fund reserves. Then we'll turn around in the next budget year and spend it to replace a culvert or, or fix a failing road. So that's semantics, but at the end of the day, if we're running fully staffed, spending all of that money, we would not have seen that increase in general fund reserves. We wouldn't be in the position we're in right now. And as time goes on, if we start filling those positions, we could be in jeopardy of actually going backwards where we are, we are um, deficit spending, cutting into our reserves, but by, by no means covering uh, our, our basic um, necessities. And by the way, we didn't give the tax collector, the sheriff's department, or the property appraiser, any of the requested money, and there was a whole page of requests by staff for Mr. 60 Chairman, million other dollars. But I know. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, I'm, I want to make one more comment, then we need to move on. <laughs> need to move the forward. Gator has to take me and let me sleep. I'm just what Mr. Harvey tonight. said. Sometimes you so, change somebody's mind. <laughs> you know, I uh, I think that it's very important to note that we gave all the the constitutional all the money they right. asked last year, right. so we didn't this year because we wanted to take care of some deals. So. 
you know, we are, we have, we are broadening the tax base. Seminoles coming online here before long with some of their money. Uh, the GP paper machine is going to pop up, and I know we don't get much first three years, but the next two years we get 20 percent, and the 15 years after that we broaden our tax base. You know, estimated 16 million dollars, I think the number was, and I'm doing it by memory. So we are broadening the tax base, and and it's getting a little better as we go. That's where we got the money last year to give to the constitutionals. That's where we got the money this year to be able to do what we did. And I'm looking forward that there's going to be some growth next year. I'm trying to remain optimistic that there is. That's the money we need to, to use to try and, and, uh, and drop our millage rate while still maintaining our status quo in the county. So that's, that's me. I don't, I don't think we need to raise taxes and fees. I'm sorry. So anyhow, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, hey, I think the comment on the floor is <laughs> August 22nd meeting, and I support okay. having do, in the do August. Do we need a motion for that? Well, I, think no, I don't think so. I think we just need consent. to have a consensus. Agree on it, 22nd. Yeah. If I could, Mr. I'm, Chair, just, for, just for record, right. we'll need something for staff so we can make sure we advertise it properly, get the proper notice out and have the uh, staff there that's required to be there and, and, and a light, and I'm going to explore the conversation and your comments earlier about wanting to expand on what it is that you'd like to be discussed at the next town hall meeting so we can get that properly advertised. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll make a motion. We have the August 22nd meeting at 6 p.m. at the Crescent City Women's Club. I'll second it. We've got a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey, proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, indicate saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. I'll reach out to Mr. Bush and see if they can reschedule. If not, I won't be able to be there. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I needed, Mr. Chairman. I, I didn't. I knew we had a conflict on dates, and I needed to see if it was going to get corrected here today. That's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Okay. We have a two o'clock workshop. Any further business to come before this commission? <coughs> we stand adjourned. Okay.